action. There we go. Yep, we're on. Okay, I can see us. Cue music. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here and thanks for sharing this with your friends. Invite them in to watch, invite them to listen to A Mexican Crossing Lines here on 88.1 FM, KPPPLP Fargo Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. And tonight, I'm hosting uh, Cindy Gomez Shemp here. And with, Duke Gomez Shemp. And we are... Um, doing a show on the caravan crisis and it's going to be very interesting i am going to share with you uh how people are exploiting the crisis how people are using the crisis of these already vulnerable people to their advantage in disgusting ways and um you're going to once again see people you know uh, if you've been watching the reporting that I've been doing about uh, the Standing Rock uh, protest that occurred and the people that were involved 
in the framing and the false uh, accusations made against Kathleen Bennett mm-hmm. that we um, managed to finally uh, exonerate and get out of jail after she'd been there for six months. There's a lot of people involved in putting this innocent woman, this innocent, innocent Lakota elder in a jail for six months and putting her mom in a hospital and in an early grave. And they were leaders, none other than the very leaders at the top at Standing Rock. It was appalling to me that they would involve themselves in such a heinous crime. But since that time, I have gone on to show you that people that were out there as the media or supposed medics or supposed um, went on to do uh, rescue work are actually committing fraud, uh, assaults, uh, rapes, uh, thefts, um, Numerous, numerous crimes. Uh, some people are going to jail, like Red Wolf Pope and uh, the son of Mike Fasig. Um, and uh, others are g- getting a pass, just kind of sliding into the radar and showing up at the next crisis somewhere. Yeah. And we need to know about that. You need to be aware so that if you see them in your state, we have an, an, a national and international audience Saludos a mi gente en México, en Sudamérica, en Centroamérica. Saludos a todos los hispanos hablantes que me puedan escuchar. And I want to tell you, I am going to be talking to my entire audience, a todos, a cada uno de ustedes, each and every one of you, wherever you may be listening from, because we need to spread the words about these culture vultures, these disaster capitalists. These exploiters that are going from disaster to disaster, from human crisis to human crisis, and making it about themselves. Not only that, they're taking resources that that are people are desperately in need of, and they are diverting those resources to themselves. It is the most, dis- you know, people say it's... Uh, terrible to take candy from a baby like mm-hmm. who would do that you've got to be some kind of a villain <laughs> yeah um these people are that kind of villains that's how i view it especially when they are taking advantage of what should have been an indigenous led movement for the people of standing rock and what instead turned into a bu- an opportunity for a bunch of people to get into some documentary and steal a bunch of um money that was supposed to be for the camp or for legal um, support at, or uh, medical support. Um, things that the, the money that people raised didn't ultimately go to. Many of you didn't know that you were simply funding the uh, um, drug and alcohol induced binges of some of these so-called Standing Rock water protectors and mm-hmm. activists. And in my latest show, I talk to you about Marcus Mitchell, the latest scandal amongst these so-called water protectors. And I say that because I think that they make everyone that had that name uh, embarrassed, or they should. And if you are still supporting these phonies, then know that they are sullying all of your names. Know that they are making you all look bad. Why would you want to continue to associate yourself to known felons, rapists, and criminals uh, when they are being brought into very vulnerable communities at very vulnerable times and you are putting all of those people at risk. You are putting those communities at risk. So I talked about the importance not only of not having those people that are con men, that are um, uh, repetitively committing crimes and exploiting people and defrauding people, okay, into a community without A, telling the people, you know, if they choose to have a relationship and or work with or uh, get support or help from one of these people, knowing that they have a uh, history of 
violent assault or rape or that they have, um, you know, a- accusations and a trail of, uh, of, of events following them that might indicate a pattern of behavior that could put people at risk, especially vulnerable people, then you too are responsible for validating that person's entry into the um, the hen house. Yeah, the fraud. You know, and the thing that really bothers me about all these characters, these um, people of how they've traded on their uh, notoriety at Standing Rock. And they continue to, to use that to elevate themselves into areas where they just do more harm to more people. And they get really nervous and they get really angry at us for pointing things out. We get criticized for, you know, we bring up the, <clears throat> the Kathleen Bennett case because most of these people were involved in that. Most of these people denied Kathleen Bennett, um, you know, any justice. And they're out there saying that we, <coughs> we are uh, working with uh, missing indigenous women and, and uh, elders and yet they put an elder in jail or they put an elder in a kidnapped an elder, put her in a hospital took another woman, Lakota woman, put her in jail for crimes she didn't commit, and they ignored it, and, and they, they actively pursued keeping her in jail. Mm-hmm. Now these same people are out there wanting to help indigenous people, help help people from all over the world, help people that need help because they've been helping so many people, and they're hypocrites, and yet they are cashing in. You know, we saw it with the Mitchell Marcus, um, you know. Bullet, you know, the, fa- you know, fake. The, the fake, the fake, sh- uh, the fake uh, gunshot. And, um, you know, all the lies that went on with that and people have been reeling for the past week trying to throw each other under the bus and clear their names, you know, just to kind of get out of that limelight because they've established other limelight that's disgusting. So we continue to, you know, we don't want to keep on covering this, but people keep on doing this stuff and they need to be exposed. They need to be watched. They need to be called out for what they're doing and the things that they're, they're causing are horrible for communities and taking advantage. And so we, we have to point it out. Yeah, I mean... I, I, I will say it again uh, because many people after my last show were talking about me or were sending me direct messages telling me that I'm being divisive. Um, yes, this was a horrible fraud that um, was perpetrated by Marcus Mitchell. And uh, he triggered a lot of people's real PTSD of being shot and uh, of, you know, being, you know, uh, left for dead somewhere, um, yeah. being traumatized in that way, um, as many people were out at Standing Rock. And yet there were so many uh, of this uh, people in media and, and uh, uh, people that are just considered Standing Rock celebrities uh, in some uh, uh, way in their own right, saying that, yeah, this is a horrible thing that this guy did, but... It's not the most horrible thing that people did. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the things they said. That's not the most horrible. There yeah. was people that got a lot more money. It was like a few thousand dollars that he managed to yeah. raise. But yeah, but we stopped him by telling you the truth. None of the people that are that are hemming and hawing and also throwing shade my way because I exposed this were going to stop it. None of you would have stopped it. Many of you, as I showed you on my show, knew it was a fraud, suspected it was a lie, saw evidence of the fact that it couldn't possibly have happened the way that he said it happened, and you still went ahead and did live stream saying, I saw it with my own two eyes. I cleaned Mm -hmm. the wound. I know for sure. Don't you be saying that this is a fraud. Don't you be saying that this isn't true. Like Mitra did. Like Orlando Cruz did. And I have more information that I've been gathering on both of those folks from them and from other people. I'm not going to be talking or going into great detail, but just know when I tell you they too are guilty. I don't just talk to hear myself mm-hmm. make noise. I bring you receipts. I show you the proof right. of what I am saying. I always do. I always have. So believe me when I tell you, there are many reasons, not just because of this current Marcus Mitchell scam, but from their own pasts in the life of Mitra Sin, that's not her real name, Hmm. 
and in the uh, lives of Orlando and in the lives of uh, Orlando Cruz Mm -hmm. and Dan the Glass Man Mm -hmm. and uh, their associations to people that are frauds and that they obviously, from what I just showed you, are willing to help defraud people with them. Because Orlando and Mitra, that's what they were doing. They went along with the lie. They helped to sustain a lie. As people were figuring out that it was a scam, they were like, no, don't stop the gravy train. We need to yeah. we need to raise the funds on that pay, on that PayPal, on those uh, Western unions as fast, as quickly as we can. Not to stop it. So yours truly had to expose that. And now the very same people that are saying, yeah, it was terrible, but it's not the worst thing that could have happened. It wasn't that much money. It wasn't that big of a deal. Those are the same people that either were helping share this fraudulent message out, the scam out, and are now attacking me for telling you about it and stopping the fraud, stopping his ability to raise money off of this lie and saying that, I'm the one that's being divisive. <laughs> yeah, you know, and also something in the background that we've continued to cover is the uh, the corrupt uh, water protector legal collective. Mm-hmm. And when we take away one, of, you know, what they have is that they 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 have these court cases still. Mm-hmm. Many of them, almost all of them, resulting in plea deals. But they need to do the press on it because they're the ones who have raised millions of dollars. They're the ones who have ripped off hundreds and hundreds of people. And when we take one of their star cases, which is going to be a, a, a you know a slam down, a, you know diversion <laughs> agreement, like a Mitchell and Marcus, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and we expose the stuff that's happening on the eve of his uh, so called mm-hmm. trial, which it wasn't a trial, it was an agreement that was made for several months. Everybody knew about it, but they needed the cash cow to come in, and the Water Protector Legal Collective needs these headlines. They need a headline, and lots of the people that we cover have strong allegiances and alliances with the water protector legal collective because they are part of the flow and we've been exposing that since the beginning when we first saw that they were a bunch of fraudulent people and they were they weren't doing the work and they were raising so much money because they got at people's heartstrings that this is a good thing to fund and they they're one of the biggest ripoffs of the whole standing rock movement and many of these people are connected to them and they don't like that we criticize them and we do it with receipts we actually have actual proof that shows their corruption and we show it they don't like that they don't want to hear about that and so that's another thing that's on the under part of this it's not so much the personal thing or what you're doing it's like oh my god they're out there exposing this stuff a little more and it's making us nervous because that's our cash cow or our gravy train and let me tell you something i don't take kindly to it because it feels to me no different than what president trump is doing himself to scapegoat this flow of refugees um and it's it's a racist trope, Duke, because President oh, yeah. Trump is using the caravan of migrants as a scapegoat, dog whistling to his base of white nationalists to hunt down and attack already vulnerable refugees that may be coming here to legally ask for asylum. Now, more recently, you've heard the president has now said he is going to refuse asylum to people, suspending the right to even seek asylum at our borders. Whether or not those actions by the president are legal or illegal will have to be fought out in the slow grind, the slow grinding wheels of justice. Um, And under Trump's administration, including his recent appointment of Justice Kavanaugh, the outcomes in that justice system for civil rights, human rights, female rights, um, queer and transgender rights are all more questionable. Those rights are in danger of sabotage or even destruction. And meanwhile, since these midterm elections, we've had a steady stream of horrifying actions by President Trump that seem part temper tantrum on steroids and part distraction from his desperate grab at power as the report of Robert Mueller's investigation seems to be looming large. Mm -hmm. What is your assessment of what's going on, Duke? 
Well, you know, of course, it's it's a huge cover up. Um, the stuff that came out right away, and it's something almost daily. You know, just yesterday, where he signed an order saying that he would prevent people on the southern border from actually having access to uh, filing for asylum, and it's specifically to the southern border. And the ACLU and the Southern Poverty Law Center actually filed uh, injunctions and lawsuits the same day, but yet it goes into effect because Trump is a branch of government. Mm -hmm. The administrative branch of government, the rest of the government has to do what the boss says because he's the commander-in-chief. He can send the military down to the border. He can Mm -hmm. have the military start bombing and killing people because he can. Whether it's right, whether it's a, you know, he shouldn't be able to do it, true. He still does and he can. So, you know, with, with him, uh, you know, firing Jeff Sessions, that racist attorney general, which I'm glad is gone, and putting this other uh, thick head uh, juggernaut in. I can't even remember his name now, but he's got a giant head and he's um, someone who Trump is disassociating with says he doesn't even know him. He continues to lie, continues to lie, and he's, he's going to make sure that this stuff on him doesn't see the light of day. And that's wrong. He shouldn't be able to do it. It's against the law but he's still going to do it. And we have to come to terms that he's doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it is like, oh, constitutional law. Yeah, you can't get rid of the 14th Amendment. You know, you can't, you can't all of a sudden amend the Constitution. It has this whole process. I've studied it before. Trump's still going to do it. And, you know, pay attention. There's other countries who have changed their Constitution. Look at Mexico. You know, it's just like, oh, it can't happen. As soon as it happens, it can happen. So for us to be so naive and to be so um, embroiled in whether the process is correct... This guy is out there on the run, on the loose, and uh, has no controls around him. If you go back and watch one of our last shows where we were talking about uh, immigration policy, and I was telling you what the local attorney, immigration attorney, was explaining about intent and how Trump was signaling his intent to earn, to um, take away birthright citizenship. He was signaling his intent to continue scapegoating and putting... um, undocumented people, putting uh, people of color, putting Muslims, putting whoever he puts a target on in danger uh, as a racist dog whistle to his base, to white supremacists uh, that may want to hurt them. That is exactly what he is calling for when he does that. We know better. I did a show on the scapegoating with terrorism where I explained why he's doing it and what that means for our country i invite you to go back and watch that and the other recent shows that i've done on these disaster vultures so you can become familiar with their faces their agendas and help protect your community because you know what the truth is it doesn't matter where you live in this country whether you're on the coasts or in the the Rust Belt, or if you're in the South or in the Northwest, it doesn't matter where you are. You are vulnerable to some kind of natural disaster, especially especially now as climate change mm-hmm. is really changing uh, the 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 weather uh, in our in our world. Um, that you know you could experience a massive flood. You could experience a, a destructive blizzard. You can experience tornadoes that destroy your town you can experience hurricanes you can experience tsunamis you can experience all of these different wildfires Mm -hmm. that destroy your community and you must know about the people that could come will come will come immediately to exploit to take the opportunity to exploit people who want to pour out their love and their support for people that are suffering. And these these particular people, they take resources from the needy. They are sick, power-hungry people that have some, some something that's disturbed their mind where they need to be the heroes of the world. So returning to, you know, the real news or the, the uh, important news of the day on uh, this caravan, um, we have seen many in the media in this last week asking whether his Trump's attack on uh, Jim Acosta during the press conference and uh, later suspension of his press credentials to enter the White House press briefings was just an attempt to shift the attention away um, to make it into a fight with the fake news and they're mm-hmm. the enemy of the people because 
of the massacres that have taken place because of his dog whistling racism, yeah. because of his inciting of hatred against uh, Jews, against refugees, uh, about this caravan specifically that ended in the murders of the people in uh, the um, uh, synagogue at uh, the Tree of Life that put so many people at risk all across this country with the mega bomber bombs mm -hmm. um, and the other um, racist who killed some black grandparents because he was uh, motivated as many terrorists these days seem to be by their hatred of people of color, by their hatred of minorities, by their anti-Semitism. And, um, or is it perhaps he was trying to pick a fight and point the finger at there's the enemy of the people, the fake news. Interestingly, note that Jim Acosta is a Cuban, came yep. from P Cuban immigrants, mm -hmm. um, that uh, held Castro's brother, Raul Castro, to account to the public. And interestingly, he's attacking Jim Acosta. Mm -hmm. And, or is it he doesn't want people to notice Robert Mueller may be bringing some indictments pretty soon? Whatever his motives are, the chilling effect that this has on journalism to be able to ask those tough questions and hold people in power accountable to us has been dealt an immense blow. Journalists throughout this country should be terrified, should be scared, should be on alert. America should be terrified and they should be fighting to ensure that the fourth estate remains a powerful check on government power as well as to ensure the constitutional rights to a free press that is yeah, not constrained. Exactly. I mean, we are becoming an America that is almost unrecognizable. We are already becoming a fascist state under a dictator. Whether or not we want to admit it, it is happening in front of our eyes. In the midst of this chaos and confusion, opportunists appear out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Claiming that they're there to help, to support, to bring awareness, to report on whatever the latest natural disaster, mass protest, or human rights crisis of the day. And they're there to exploit the suffering of other people and use it as an opportunity to make money and to elevate their own brand. It is disaster capitalism at its worst. It is appropriation of suffering. And many of these people, as I have shown you and will continue to show you, are fake Indians, are pretend Indianing, just so that they can be heroes, just so they can be famous, so they can be worshipped. Let me show you who some of these people are that we have hmm. talked about in the past and how they inserted themselves into these uh, emergencies. Louis Monsivice was one of the people in Activate Now's many group of reporters that I have featured. And here is one of the videos that they did from Hurricane Harvey where they are broadcasting, supposedly, they're there to provide relief and support and blah, blah, blah. All they really did, it seemed, was do this live stream. And uh, then they bo booked it out of there, went to Florida, um, stayed at Victoria Dargan's house who later told me they didn't do anything to help people there either. But of course, all along the way, they were raising money. Who were some of these disaster vultures on this video? Duke, can you read? Yes. Special Hurricane Harvey broadcast. We're joined here tonight in Austin, Texas with Terrence Daniels. Support the revolution. Luis Montevas. Miko Hayes from the Daily Hayes, Mona Cedillo, and Ed Higgins here to discuss Hurricane Harvey disaster effort. Right. Look at them. And you know, when I did the show about Puerto Rico, the disaster vultures in Puerto Rico 1 and 2, ter there came Terrence Daniels to complain. Yeah. To say, uh, not me. I wasn't even that close to Ed. I yeah. wasn't there at the same time as Ed. Don't blame me for Ed. I'm blaming you for all of you. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's acting like Trump. Uh, didn't know him. Had nothing to do with him. You know, it's, um, you know, he actually came on the show and uh, 
you know, commented right on the show, gave us calls, and he's like demanding to be on the air right now. Uh, you know, we we put people on our shows. We always uh, set up interviews. Uh, we don't. We're not a call-in show. You know, mm-hmm. you just can't call in and get on this show. We're not going to do it that way. You can do that with other platforms if they offer that, but it's not something we do. And you know, so it. And we do. We do follow up and call people. We do um, set up interviews. We do uh, audio interviews, video interviews, and we do a lot of that stuff. Um, but you know, we run. We run this program. You know, this is our program, mm-hmm. and we do love when people want to give us some information. And you know, there's many ways you can do that. And you know, we talk about it every show, and I think it's really important to set the stage of what we are. We are a nonprofit, non-commercial radio station in Fargo, North Dakota, Moorhead, Minnesota. We have a range of about 150, 160,000 people in a small uh, rural metro community, <laughs> and we have a really long reach. We want a radio license with the FCC, where there's only 1,700 that are given out nationwide, because we are a nonprofit organization dedicated to media justice. And we do that work, and uh, you participate with it. The, the Facebook Live has given us live has given us the opportunity to be able to go and reach a broader audience. But we broadcast almost every one of these shows. Not all of them, you know. Some we don't actually put out there, but we we edit shows and we put them on the local radio for people to to actually hear what's going on. And you know, these are more visual shows because we do use cameras, but we try to make them audio specific so people can listen in. And uh, we love when you all send us information, and I'm just going to do a quick little thing before we get back into the rest of the show is that you can uh, give us a call and leave a voice message, you know, because it's a message line, and the number is 701-566-0917. Again, that's 701-566-0917. It's a way that you can call in and give us your voice, and it gets recorded, you know, so sometimes we actually air them, you know, and some, some people say, I don't air them. But you can do an email, uh, cindy at kppfm.com, or me, Duke at kppfm.com, or you know you can go to you go to Facebook. Our Facebook page is, is pretty popular for people communicating with us. It's an open public page, 88.1 FM Fargo Moorhead. Just type that in your Facebook search, find us and send us information. We get a lot of information. Believe me, we have a whole bunch that's sitting there, but we've actually been going through it, and it just takes time for us to go through it, and when when to use it. And so we encourage encourage you to keep on doing that, and also go to our web page because um, we're now taking our videos from. Facebook, and we're putting them on YouTube, and go subscribe to our channel. It's Duke1517. That's just a name that, for some reason, I can't change it, and I don't want to change it because we have had a lot of videos over the years there. And uh, you can go there and subscribe, but go to our webpage to see our shows and listen to our shows. It's mm-hmm. kppfm.com, and uh, go under archives or go under our Mexican Crossing Lines. There's also Finding Me. There's other shows that are on there, and you can check out what we're doing. A lot of it's just audio content, and it shows kind of our history you know, all the Kathleen Bennett stuff, all the Standing Rock work we did is all on those web pages. And there, there are so many interviews with people that were at Standing Rock that started, you know, pretty much the summer after Standing Rock started at Osetti Chacon Camp. And that's where we spent most of our time. We went there five times. So we have credentials that we've a- actually done the work. And it's documented and it's on our web page. And also, like I mentioned, we are a nonprofit organization. And uh, we don't, we basically write grants we've gotten some small grants and we get donations from the community because we are an authentic 501c3 nonprofit meaning we're recognized by the federal and the state government both and you can go to kppfm.com slash donate and make a tax deductible donation to our station to help us operate and do the work we're doing also if you have a business or you have a website you want to promote you can do an underwriting piece where we'll actually mention you on the air and uh and in result of you giving us a tax deductible donation your business will get advertised through the way the fcc allows us to do and so there's all these opportunities for you to participate in our in our organization in our broadcasts and in our work and they thank you uh in advance for your support of our station i thank you in advance for sending your donations large or small every one of them is um very uh, useful to our work and we we thank you very much for your support of our work it is something that is definitely a labor of love for us here at 88.1 fm kpplp and i think that it's something that no one else is really doing Mm -hmm. i think we've been tracking a lot of these disaster vultures and uh conmen that have come out of standing rock uh in a much more detailed way than anyone uh, really has 
That's right. You know, and, and, and we encourage people to do more. I mean, we don't want to corner the market on doing true investigative work. No. And, uh, you know, we want, we want other people to do it. That's how we've always run our organization. We, we teach. We give away everything we have. We want to have more people doing authentic media. And imagine if Standing Rock would have had really good media people there instead of the frauds who went in there, like a unicorn riot and a digital smoke signals and bunches and bunches Activate of others. Activate now. Activate now. All these fake news organizations that are still trying to use that cred to show that they are authentic, uh, legitimate platforms, and they're not. They're not. We want to have people that are legitimate. Uh, the environmental indig Indigenous Environmental Network, another fraud, even though they've been a group that's been around for a long time, working on behalf of indiv individ uh, Indigenous individuals, and yet they're, they're doing this sleight of hand, and they're doing these dirty deals, and they've been caught up into the sickness. We don't want that. We want people to do real media, and whatever we can do to help, we will, because that's our mission in our organization. I don't appreciate the fact that they seem to have sold out to corporate interests, to the interests of wealthy millionaire, billionaire, um, you know, their Hollywood um, energy-related uh NGO related money. Yeah. And and it in it ultimately and I've showed you this on my multiple shows about fake progressives and the fake progressive agenda. You can go find all of those on kppfm.com. Um their goal really is not helping people of color. They claim they say the right things, they show up at the right places, they have, you know, they put the people of color that you want to see leading these things right in front of you. Although some of them aren't real Indians like Red Wolf Pope. Yeah. Or like, like Desiree Kane. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. I've talked about this too. It's a problem. But there are other ways to appropriate culture, right? Because some folks like Olive Bias claimed, um, had just realized when she was out at Standing Rock, she was an Indian. She didn't know it the whole time. <laughs> but immediately started singing songs in Lakota. Mm -hmm. Immediately started acting Indian when she doesn't seem to have a right to like claim to that kind of spirituality and tradition. Don't be pretending that so that you can then dole out your wisdom you can't just appropriate someone else's experience. And a lot of these folks are doing just that. One of them is this Louis Monsivice. And here's one, uh, the picture of them out in doing this uh, live stream in Harvey, Hurricane Harvey. He's the one there on the end with the baseball cap sitting next to Ed Higgins. Mm -hmm. Next to Ed Higgins is uh, Miko Hayes. Next to uh, Miko Hayes is Terrence Daniels. Yeah. And next to Terrence Daniels is Mona Cedillo. Oh, yeah. She departed that group shortly after this occurred, if you recall. Oh, yeah. So um, those uh, folks then went on to do supposed disaster relief in Puerto Rico, as I told you. But I showed you along the way all the crimes that they have committed and all the ways that they have tried to exploit the disaster areas. Now I'm going to show you what they're, some of these folks are up to today. Okay. This is a drone um, post by Louis Monsivice about how he is... By the, take that down for just a second. Let me just say that if you go onto Louis Monsivice's page yours, yourself, you will find all of the posts that I am referring to that go uh, along this timeline on his recent mission or journey as he's calling it in one of these videos where he's driving out there and he's like I'm going on my next mission and and um he's he's a he's an odd duck he's very very strange in the head this man and I'm not going to show you all of that it's bad enough that I'm going to have to put you through a lot of uh a lot of his videos just so that you can understand the level of crazy but again I have to show you my receipts here. I have to show you my work so that you understand for yourselves that I let you see it so you can decide. So he's out uh, in Texas 
He tells you that he packed up his car. He's, he's going out there for a while. He's on a mission of some sort. Um, I hate that people continue to fund these missions to go to places where people are in vulnerable states because he's headed over to the border okay. to, tr to observe for himself what's going on with this migrant caravan and to what appears to me try to um, supposedly get uh, people over the border, try to bring people over the border. Hmm. And I will tell you that the reason why I believe that that is his intent and why that's horrific and dangerous and terrifying. Um, si ustedes son personas hispanohablantes, conocen a alguien que viene en la caravana o que tiene inten intención de cruzar la frontera, estén en alerta, estén con el ojo eh, puesto por, para buscar a este hombre, Luis Mansevice, ¿ok? Porque es una persona peligrosa, es una persona peligrosa y posiblemente está demente. Posiblemente es un loco. So watch out for this dude because, and I'm going to show you why you should be concerned. I've told you a lot of these people are extremely dangerous. This guy is no less dangerous than the ones I have shown you in the past. So at this point, he's posting about, he, he's already arrived on location at the border and he is going to throw a drone up in the air. Here's a post about him saying that he's going to go and uh, spy on Kelsey Warren's house in the town of Lajitas. And he keeps saying that this place where he's at, Kelsey Warren, near Kelsey Warren's house, is one of the easiest places to cross the Rio Grande from Mexico into the United States. And he keeps saying it over and over and over and he keeps posting i'm not going to show you all the posts but i'm going to show you a smattering of them enough of them so that you can see for yourself that is his intent it's and he actually tells people if anybody wants to cross if anybody needs my help um i know of really great places where you can cross where it's super easy i wouldn't let this guy take care of my pet rat <laughs> I wouldn't let this guy take care of a cockroach. This man is da dangerous. I wouldn't let him near anybody or anything that I cared about because he is <clears throat> a danger to other people and he's also a sociopathic liar. So I think that somebody that can make up a lie of the magnitude of Marcus Mitchell is, a, it's not, they're not only frauds, they, there's something wrong with them. Like, they don't know how to human properly. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be allowed to scam people and con people in that way. And so, um, in, and if you want to argue whether or not these people are sick and they need medical or whatever kind of care, go ahead and, and argue that. Uh, you don't have the right to put other people in danger in the meantime. They don't have the right to exploit and put other people in danger in the meantime. And that's exactly what they feel that they have the right to do. And that should concern everyone. So here's a clip of that video where he's talking about how he's going to go and spy on Kelsey Warren's okay. house. All right. P.S. I don't think this is Kelsey Warren's house. <laughs> I think it's a hotel. I think it's a, a resort. It is, in fact, a resort, a golfing resort that is right on the border. This resort has been featured in uh, news reports about the, the border wall and how porous it is and how there are places in which it can't be built or, you know, they don't know, like, what are they going to do about this particular little stretch of land? Because it, it, you, you would have to build a big uh, wall over this property right on top of the property mm -hmm. to build it across along the 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 you know the Rio Grande however the way that they've like kind of circumvented that is that they put it around the outside of the yeah. um of the uh you know um the actual border uh, yeah yeah out yeah out of the uh, inside the uh, the border but um this um this golf course is not going to be disturbed because it's the place where rich people go and golf, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. However, I don't know that it's Kelsey Warren's house. 
Um, he himself says Kelsey Warren is not there. He doesn't know where Kelsey Warren is. He doesn't know if he's really going to see Kelsey Warren or if he's going to get close to him or anything. But he may, who wants him? He wants to make it seem like he's like the dun 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 dun, dun, oh, yeah. dun <laughs> super spy 007. He's oh, yeah. flying his drone. He's spying on him. He's going to go into the mouth of the lion right, and do an intel. Stand up to the man, Kelsey Warren. But he ain't okay. And of course, he wants you to support his efforts by sending him money to his PayPal. Mm. Anyway, here's a clip. Hopefully, Jimmy. Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. I'm at a place called Lajitas, Texas, right on the Rio Grande. The river is about a thousand feet behind me. So for those just joining, I'm at a place called Lajitas, Texas, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this place. I'm going to talk to you about the Rio Grande that's so close and why it makes it a hot spot to cross from Mexico into the United States. To give a little bit of backdrop about this town called Lajitas, Texas, and uh, a reminder, the Rio Grande is about a thousand feet, maybe 1,500 feet, right on the other side of this road. I'm at Lajitas Golf Club, and they have a little convenience store here. There's one thing that you have to know about this town. It's basically Kelsey Warren's town. It is nudged up with a eight-hole golf course or nine-hole golf course right up against the Rio Grande. And I have crossed this area many, many, many times. I have dear friends, comrades, uh, right on the other side of the Rio. And uh, this right here is what I'm gonna, uh, what I'm gonna do, and what I like to do is I'm gonna fly my drone. I got it all situated and all ready. I'm gonna fly my drone and uh, I'm going to show you his estate and his house that is nestled up. It's one of the biggest places here in this entire, uh, entire region. And it does uh, bank up right next to the Rio Grande. Basically, he has the front room view of the Rio Grande right through his front yard, so to speak. So. I want to just remind people as uh, this border wall attempts itself and this way of life attempts itself to try to stop uh, traditional migrant uh, roadways and thoroughfares. There are people like Kelsey Warren, multi-billionaire, oil tycoon, oil big goon, I like to call him, who owns a large stretch of this entire area in this entire region brings in a lot of big wigs here to play in the golf course and his house is banked up right against the Rio Grande so the people that think that uh, uh, want a question on what is it is it gonna be lost if there's a wall that goes here all honesty I feel that this on the wall aspect is gonna be like many other places along the Rio Grande you're not just going to have opposition on this side of the Rio. You're also going to have opposition on the other side of the Rio. Now, what does that mean? That means that, yes, you'll have protesters and people that want to stop the wall on this side here in Lajitas. But chances are he's going to lock that down and there's no telling what's going to add to the future. But you just won't have resistance in so many places along the Rio Grande because I'm right on the Rio Grande area region following the Rio at this time. Motor in my way is, is the best that I can along this area, limping along, so to speak. There is going to be, throughout these areas along this entire Rio Grande Valley area, or Rio Grande area, where the wall intends to go to stop migrants and people from crossing, or that's the intent, you're going to have places that are going to defy your wall, defy your authority, and defy your machinery not just from this side it's also going to be on the other side on the on the rio south side the mexico side side that's where also you're going to have to understand that the law enforcement that comes to this side of the rio grande or the american side that is up to stop 
protesters or up to stop uh, resistors on building that wall, which there will be many in many places, as there are already in many places. Uh, they're going to get resistance also the other side. And what does that mean? That means the authorities do have run on this area, but they do not have any authority on the other side of the Rio Grande. So that leaves open an entire stretch of Rio Grande area to protest and resist the wall. So these are things that aren't being thought of and I wanted to bring up because I am going to set the drone up in the air and we are going to go take a look at Kelsey Warren's house. Okay. Um, hmm. Hey, uh, does anyone else want to stab their ears until they bleed every time <laughs> he says Rio Grande? Mm -hmm. Is it just me? <laughs> oh my God, that is so annoying. Dude, you are not in a Taco Bell commercial. Stop <laughs> saying Grande. <laughs> like... You can just tell that he definitely wants to make you believe he speaks Spanish, but he does not speak Spanish. He does not know about the Rio Grande. He does not know that, for example, pendejo, we don't say Rio Grande. That's how the Americans say the name of the river, Rio Grande, because y'all like to rename stuff mm -hmm. in your white splaining image. That's right. You do that to everything. Devil's Lake, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's Spirit Lake, but you wanted it to be about the devil, so Devil's Lake it became. You know, everything gets changed because you want to put your white superiority over the top of it. But that's actually called the Rio Bravo. Every Mexican knows, and we call it the Rio Bravo. The full name of it is El Rio Bravo del Norte, okay? But este pendejo no sabe nada de eso because... He's a moron, <laughs> but also because he's appropriating. Notice the hallmarks of all of these disaster vultures. They're like, I am a pretend Indian and he's going to, uh, I'm now I speak Spanish. And, you know, when he was at Standing Rock, he was pretend Indianing. Now he's going to pretend Mexicaning. Yeah. And these things are appropriation. He may very well be Mexican for all I know. But he don't know squat about the culture, the work. He does. He's just uh, exploiting uh, an opportunity and pretending that he has skills and background and culture and tradition that he does not possess. So then he posts about the drone um, going up in the air. It says Kelsey Warren's house. Still no sign of him. This is on November 4th. And uh, it's a really bad video that he um, produced while droning the supposed <laughs> site of Kelsey Warren. This, I don't think, is Kelsey Warren's house. And I will tell you why I don't think so. But this is what he claims. Remember, like this Marcus Mitchell and so many of the other people that I've shown you are frauds, they just make stuff up. They go on a live stream. They take pictures of, my, of themselves in these places and a lot of them don't even make an effort to look like they're actually doing the thing they're saying. Like they'll be holding buckets that are empty. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <clears throat> they like they're pretend clean up. Yeah. They're like supposedly cleaning up places that were, you know, devastated in Hurricane Marina, uh, Maria in Puerto Rico. And they're all clean. Mm -hmm. And there's just like so many things I have questions about that I'm just like, no, I don't. Um, and so part of it is all of the illusion, but they have to make it seem like I'm a hero. Mm -hmm. So they have to put out this, this, uh, story and some of them involve fake murders that, and, and fake gunfights that never happen right. and, and screaming and crying for their life. And like Marcus Mitchell, and some of it involves this kind of nonsense where you have this guy pretending that he's going to go get intel on Kelsey Warren's house and hold him accountable. And he says in his little video that, you know, he's not afraid to do this. Somebody has to, has to hold him accountable. And he said, I need to, put, we need to intimidate these men. We need to put the fear of God into them. He talks some smack, you know, mm -hmm. he talks a lot of smack. I wish 
that uh, somebody in the law enforcement community was listening to that and found out if that really was a Kelsey Warren's house so they could go and arrest him for uh, threatening and harassing him because he says in his live stream, that's what he's doing. But see, the thing is, he's t he's a big talker because he's not doing anything that's going to put him in danger ever mm. or even be difficult for him to pull off. You know, these people act like they're going out to these horrible conditions. They ain't staying in no horrible conditions. Even when they were at Standing Rock, they wanted to make you think they were freezing to death and all the things they endured. A lot of them were staying in yurts. Yeah. All right. A mm -hmm. lot of them were staying in very nice accommodation. And a whole hell of a lot of them spent almost all their time at the casino, yep. not at the camp. So I, I want you to notice that there is this creation of an illusion. And you might think to yourself, well, what's the big deal? They want to pretend that they're heroes. The problem is, one, they're conning people out of money. They're raising millions and millions of dollars and have done so in order to go and be these so-called heroes. Two, many of them don't have any of the skills they claim, including saying that they're medics, marshals, uh, all sorts of things. And that's dangerous because, one, I think it's a crime for you to impersonate law enforcement, which many of these people have done. I think it's just gross to uh, claim valor that doesn't belong to you, like many of these people have done. And they also put people at risk when they claim to have, uh, you know, knowledge of psychiatric uh, or medical or other um, uh, first responder skills that they don't actually have because they're going and putting themselves out there as if they did in places where people could really die. And so on the balance of all of that, I say beware. Beware of these particular kinds of exploiters. Here is that horrible drone video clip. Oops, no. Wrong, sorry. Oh good, it's working. I'm having really bad reception here. Weak image transmission. Can't really see where I'm flying. There it is, I see a little bit. So this right here is the, I call one of the Dragon's Lairs. It is where Kelsey Warrens resides in Lajita, Texas. I'm just getting really bad. Really bad reception. I just can't even see. So this is Kelsixis. That's Kelsey's house, he says. Again, I don't think it's Kelsey's house. Uh, then he posts a picture of himself in the dragon's lair, meaning in Kelsey Warren's house. And if you go to his page, people even ask him, is he there? Are you in his kitchen? No, he's in a restaurant. Can you, can you not tell that this is a restaurant just from looking at the picture he posted of himself? Mm -hmm. I can. You know what gives it away? That little table that's right there that, that the, you know, waiters and waitresses bring big giant platters of all of the plates and food on and they put them on those little you know folding um tray holders yep. that they use in hotel rooms also to put mm -hmm. your suitcase on mm -hmm. yeah it's right in the picture usually uh people don't have those in their homes yeah it's a commercial thing <laughs> yeah it's used for commercial purposes and also if you look at his post what he said on that picture he says, 
he's in Kelsey Warren's house. Yeah. Okay, so mm-hmm. I'm not making up that he this is his claim, even though it's absurd. And he says he's in the dragon's lair again. He's up in the end. He wants he he wants you to think that he's like Tom Cruise. Admission impossible. Dun, 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 dun. You know, he, he wants you to think that he's 007. And then he broke into Kelsey Warren's house. And he's right there. Like, you know, he's counting coup on this guy, right? Mm-hmm. But he ain't. And he's raising money off of that. But here's where he's really at. He, he really is. <laughs> he's at the Candelilla Cafe. You can see that picture right there. You can, this is on TripAdvisor. You can find it. There's the, the, that, um, you know, fountain and uh, that uh, off to the right in the picture, there's that fountain that you see. That's, yeah. And then you can see the same view right there in that um, canopied outside patio mm-hmm. restaurant that he was standing at. So he's in a golf resort restaurant. Wow. And he had someone take a picture of him right there and then he posted it like, He's in Kelsey Warren's That's right. house. That's right. Oh my God, he's so amazing. Mm-hmm. Now, um, and here is another picture where he checked in <laughs> <laughs> on his Facebook page. Oh, funny! At the Lajitas La Golf Resort oh. in Lajita, Texas, and uh, he, you know, he put he posted it right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, next. I will show you the um, golf resort. Uh, no, I already showed you the golf resort check-in. It's the river. So he um, went down and took pictures of the Rio Bravo. And he posts them um, sometimes with the, um, hey, this is a really great place to cross. If you, if you know someone that needs to cross, let them know this is a great place. Here's another one. He says, easy crossing into the U.S., Lajitas, Texas. Hashtag Kelsey Warren's house. And this is on November 4th. So he really wants to show that, one, he knows good places to cross at. And mm-hmm. he's letting unsuspecting migrants know that's a good spot. Do you think that anyone that crosses knows the terrain of crossing and or is helping someone to cross that border would put it up on social That's media? Right. Yeah, broadcasting. Here's a good spot. Here's another good spot. Right here, I'll give you, a, a, I'll do a map. I'll do a, a geo tag of it so you know where the really good spot is. It's like, yeah, the first thing I thought is that he's alerting authorities so people will, you know, get harassed and in danger. He's first putting people thought, in danger. Yes. That is exactly what he's doing. He is putting people in danger. No, no self-respecting uh, person that was really intending to help migrants would ever put any information that would target them out in social media in public. This guy is, again, either he is a complete moron <laughs> or he's doing this on purpose. And if he's either one, he's dangerous. If he's either one, it's dangerous. So here he is um, talking about how he's going to the Rio Grande. Yeah. This is before he arrives, by the way, at the location where he's going to be going, I guess, to observe the crossers. Mm-hmm. Um, I started praying for the, the, ca- the caravan and anyone that might cross this, this wacko's path as, as soon as I saw these posts. He says, going along the Rio Grande isn't the safest, but it needs to be done and documented. All donations are welcome. PayPal me at Luis Monsivice. Yep. That's not his real name. But it is very distressing to me because these are my people. This is very personal to me. And that's why I want people to know. Este hombre es peligroso. Este hombre no sabe de lo que está hablando. Es una persona que pone a otros en peligro. Es un criminal. Es un criminal de carrera. So watch out. Here is his video where he is talking about how he is a coyote. He's a coyote. Hmm. He, he essentially says that he's a coyote, which means he helps people cross. People pay him to cross them over the border for money. But let me tell you something. First of all, 
no self-respecting coyote would ever do a live stream telling yeah. everyone that he does that exactly. because they could put you in jail. So you know this guy is either a fraud or a moron. It doesn't matter which one he is. It's still dangerous to all of us. Second of all, he doesn't know the terrain, the location where he is. He doesn't know the Mexico side. Nobody that would be helping people cross the border wouldn't be fluent in Spanish, at least as fluent as I am, maybe more. He don't know and he can't speak in Spanish to anywhere close to that degree. He, he's got a pocket dictionary and he probably knows, you know, a handful of words, but he doesn't know anything about the culture or the language or the location where he is. So the fact that he's advertising as someone that's been doing this, that knows this, that has done this for years, isn't just a misdirection. It is dangerous because if people are lured, hopefully no one is this stupid. Hmm. Hopefully no one is stupid enough to fall for him uh, and what he, you know, he purports to be able to provide. Um, but, you know, at, at the very least, I think they're going to try to find people to present on a live stream or in a picture as the folks that they helped or talked to or what have you. In this show, I'm going to show you how in his quest to have a story of, her, of heroism to tell about himself, Louis Monsivais tells a story in which he's involved in helping find and rescue a group of people, a group of uh, hi hikers, canoers that were out in this national park after one of them had an accident and died. I don't believe he was involved in any way, shape, or form in what he claims to have been, uh, which was a rescue and alert to the authorities about this man dying and his counseling and grief counseling of the people that survived this incident and uh, his uh, rescue of their canoe and supplies that they left by the river. And what I can tell you uh, is that he doesn't show you any pictures of these people that he says that he helped to rescue. He doesn't do a live stream with them. He doesn't do um, uh, a selfie. He doesn't know their names. He refers to them as Caucasian individuals, mm -hmm. white men, white women. He refers to them as females and uh, uh, males. Uh, but he does not. He he says one of them was Dick and the other one was I don't know his name. In the very same video where he tells you they're all like family now mm -hmm. because of this traumatic event that they all went through, where he was involved and he helped to rescue the people from this traumatic event and notify the authorities of the death. These people will say anything to insert themselves into a situation and have a story about how they're heroes. Like, you don't have to, you know, jump in front of a moving train or have some like superhero story, um, many of whom I am suspecting are Whole, invented out of whole cloth um, or crafted for a documentary but orchestrated nonetheless like many of the ones that happened out at Standing Rock. Uh, you can just be an everyday kind human being that has compassion. One way that you can help this migrant caravan is by not uh, sending money to weirdos to stock them like this one. Luis Monsivais, a.k.a. Luis, Luis Gutierrez. Gutierrez, se llama Gutierrez. Okay? That's his real name. So, um, did we show the video? No. Go ahead and show the video of him talking about how he's a human trafficker. <laughs> Let's see if we can get somebody on here. Just going to talk about uh, a little bit of everything this morning. I really never know when I'm going to do a live feed. I always just feel to do one every once in a while. I 
Oh, good. Hey, good morning. Oh, good. Good morning. I got a couple people coming on. Like I say, um, I'm going to continue to make my, my way down the Rio Grande River. Uh, I'm traveling right now just to kind of bring people up to par. I figured I'd do a live feed right now because I'm posted up at some uh, people's property. They're so gracious to uh, open up their property to me. And uh, it's been a fantastic uh, day and a half or so here uh, going using their property as a home base. It's a safe spot. <clears throat> And uh, they have Wi-Fi, so they allow me to piggyback off of them, which is really great. And I kind of want to give people an update on where I'm going to be going and what I'm going to be doing as much as I possibly can. Because where I'm going is no Wi-Fi and uh, no service. And I want to make sure people understand about where I'm at and what my intentions are. What I want to try to continue to do, since I'm in this region and I'm... Uh, I guess at the hands of uh, life in general, I'm going to make the best I possibly can out of the situation and do as much research as I can here along the border. I think it's an important issue because we have uh, so much separation amongst the American people and amongst the people about a border wall, about migrants and asylum seekers, about uh, border crossings. Uh, we have uh, human traffickers that people are, are interested in and these are some of the topics that I want to talk about Because I think it's important that uh, People get another narrative of what's the truth out here as I continue to talk to people individual people or interview individual people uh, They tell me a lot of what I suspect that regardless the beauty of this area and the sanctuaries in this area and the parks in this region and the waterways and the people that make the money and the, uh, through the Rio Grande, there will be no border wall, they say, in this area. There have been small cities like Trilingua who has passed ordinance for a no wall ordinance. Uh, there have been uh, places like, as we know, we have visited the last several days, Kelsey Warren's town called Lajitas. And the employees and people there told me specifically that he has pushed um, for uh, a no wall through his area also as well. So I think it's important time of our lives to be able to have somebody out here at least trying to show and document and drone video footage and interview and see for ourselves what's really going on in these regions and what's the possibilities um, because we have a lot of fear involved with our news outlets uh, with the, uh, your president uh, with the people with bigotry with racism uh, with uh, human rights violation on such a mass scale that it's 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 seeming like you're you're having um, a wildfire of hate or a wildfire of bigotry, a wildfire of fear, let's call it. Can you get it going again or no? I would have to start over. Sorry, sorry about that, folks. What happened? It's, it's stuck. What if um, you do it and it does the same thing again? We could try. Okay, let's try. Let's see if we can get somebody on here. Just going to talk about uh, a little bit of everything this morning. Maybe you edited it down. I really never know when I'm going to do a live feed. I always just feel to mm -hmm. do one every once in a while. Oh, good. Hey, good morning. Hmm. That's weird. Oh, another broadcast that interrupted. Oh, good. Good morning. I got a couple people coming on. Like I say, um, I'm going to continue to make my, my way down the Rio Grande River. 
Uh, I'm traveling right now just to kind of bring people up to par. I figured I'd do a live feed right now because I'm posted up at some uh, people's property. They're so gracious to uh, open up their property to me. And uh, it's been a fantastic uh, day and a half or so here uh, going using their property as a home base. It's a safe spot. <clears throat> And uh, they have Wi-Fi, so they allow me to piggyback off of them, which is really great. And I kind of want to give people an update on where I'm going to be going and what I'm going to be doing as much as I possibly can. Because where I'm going is no Wi-Fi and uh, no service. And I want to make sure people understand about where I'm at and what my intentions are. What I want to try to continue to do, since I'm in this region and I'm... Uh, I guess at the hands of uh, life in general, I'm going to make the best I possibly can out of the situation and do as much research as I can here along the border. I think it's an important issue because we have uh, so much separation amongst the American people and amongst the people about a border wall, about migrants and asylum seekers about uh, border crossings, start the other video uh, we have uh, audio human audio. traffickers that people are, are interested in, and these are some of the topics that I want to talk about, because I think it's important that uh, people get another narrative of what's the truth out here. As I continue to talk to people, individual people, or interview individual people, uh, they tell me a lot of what I suspect that regardless the beauty of this area and the sanctuaries in this area and the parks in this region and the waterways and the people that make the money and the, uh, through the Rio Grande, there will be no border wall, they say, in this area. There have been small cities like Trilingua who has passed ordinance for a no wall ordinance. Uh, there have been uh, places like, as we know, we have visited the last several days, Kelsey Warren's town called Lajitas. And the employees and people there told me specifically that he has pushed um, for uh, a no wall through his area also as well. So I think it's important time of our lives to be able to have somebody out here at least trying to show and document and drone video footage and interview and see for ourselves what's really going on in these regions and what's the possibilities um, because we have a lot of fear involved with our news outlets uh, with uh, your president uh, with the people with bigotry with racism uh, with uh, human rights violation on such a mass scale that it's 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 seeming like you're you're having um, a wildfire of hate or a wildfire of bigotry, a wildfire of fear, let's call it. it I'm sorry, again. folks. It did it again. Okay. Yep. I'm, so, ha I'm having a bad tech day. Some people oh. have bad hair days, but that one didn't work very well. Sorry about that. That's my bad. Okay. Well, I will tell you what it said. I mean, I already did tell you what it said. I was uh, going to let you listen to, to it for yourself, but now... You're just going to have to go find it on his page and listen to it on Facebook if you want to. Um, what I can tell you is that he goes on to say that he is a coyote. Now, he doesn't say the word coyote, but he says that he is not, uh, it, it's a business, it's a money business, mm -hmm. that he and his bosses and leaders were running to help people. They took very good care of their people, and he's been doing this for years. And so uh, it's completely idiotic and unbelievable, however, because he doesn't n even know the terms. He doesn't have any idea of the history of the problems. He describes things in ways like he's telling a made up story like the kind that they wanted you to believe about Standing Rock and, you know, the history of the Indians of that place and and their traditional right to this and that. And they're trying to superimpose this kind of language on top of what's happening at the border. And it's weird. And it, it, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't fit the, the narrative. But also, it's complete BS. Hmm. So you should not believe that this guy 
is uh, somebody that knows anything about crossing people over. No one should trust him to do anything like that. Este hombre no es un coyote, no sabe de lo que está hablando. Es un idiota, es un criminal y es un, un fraude. That is what this guy is. That I can guarantee you. So, um, and you know, not only is he tongue-tied, not only does he not talk about things the proper way, um, he also uh, is very tone-deaf and ignorant about how he comes off when he keeps talking like, Rio Grande, Rio Grande, Rio Grande. And you sound like an idiot, but you also sound appropriative, exploitative, and tone-deaf. Here's one of his posts about how he is going to cross the Rio Grande River. Again, he's posting this about a crossing location. And there's somebody that's in a canoe. I presume it's him. And it says, row, row, row your boat across the Rio Grande. It's like a, <laughs> a joke to him. Yeah. This isn't a joke. This is something that has been going on. And this isn't something that just happened because of this 7,000 or however many people started marching across the, um, you know, Mexico to try to yeah. come into Mexico and possibly to come to the United States. We don't even know if, if those people are going to come here. I don't think that there's going to be that many, uh, if any people that actually arrive uh, to try to cross into the United States, especially now that President Ob um, Trump has sent uh, military people to the, and they're, you know, mm -hmm, stringing exactly. cars and Tina wire all across uh, border walls, the mm -hmm. top of border walls. Um, I think all of that was a racist dog whistle to, to his base before the midterms because they kind of shut up about it right after the midterm mm -hmm, elections. Mm -hmm. But it's it's for show. It's, you know, a way of Trump uh, pointing the finger at something else and keeping it off the spotlight off of him, keeping the heat off of himself as well. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about either. And when he does say something, it's just, it sounds and looks wrong. Mm. This is a video he posted about how he is uh, talking about peyote. And he says, grandfather, sacred medicine. Again, this whole like Indian talk is nauseating. And here's a cl the video that he posted in which he seems to be looking for someone that can help him transport. Mm -hmm. A controlled substance peyote <laughs> across texas once again telling the world what he's doing right I, how many you know in in spanish we have a saying that um only babies and drunk people tell the world what their plans are this guy is the worst criminal in the world he's constantly telling people oh, i'm this badass that crosses people across the border and transports peyote and i'm doing this and i'm doing that and um uh, and this is what I do. No, what you do is lie and defraud people. And yeah, he is a criminal, but he's a bad one. And he also gets caught a lot and he's gone to jail a lot. Mm -hmm. So anyway, here's his video about the peyote. I believe I have a person on that actually has worked. <clears throat> Perfect. It's working. I tried three times <clears throat> to do this video but I mentioned the word peyote in my title and transport and they would not let it out. The only reason that I'm doing this video is to talk a little bit and to ask for some help. I wanna talk about the sacred plant and the sacred medicine that we call grandfather as others know it as peyote. We have um, regions in this area on the Mexican side of the Rio Grande, uh, fields of the sacred medicine that are tended to and have been tended to for generations and generations. Um, we have uh, individuals that their fathers and grandfathers have and fathers' fathers have tended to this medicine in the fields in Mexico, in certain areas. I am and have been very close to these areas and within these areas. I met with 
some of the individuals and uh, I'm looking now for a Piotr or I'm looking for a license um, a licensed individual licensed medicine person to be able to transport through the regions of Texas um, to be able to transport to greenhouses and grow houses to be able to continue this sacred medicine in its proper way in the proper manner throughout Facebook and the internet I have and that's one of the most biggest threats to this medicine is improper harvesting people are pulling it up harvesting it wrong and uh, more than that they're not um, regrowing the grandfather not regrowing the plant and it is in a dangerous state as of to, uh, as of today um, if anybody out there knows of a license individual a license to transport and it's very common it's very common to the indigenous our indigenous brothers and sisters that are out there who can I do know some folks in some regions but I have not been able to get in touch with them so I'm gonna do a quick live feed about the sacred plant of biote and the sacred medicine if anybody has a license and I am only looking for a license carrier to be able to carry the sacred medicine from place to place through checkpoints in the United States and into Texas we have um, bushels that are ready to be harvested and all I need right now at this point to be able to bring the sacred medicine further up into Texas it is in Texas now is a licensed individual so if that is you please contact me I'll help you get here and uh, the rest will be in your hands and recap I only want licensed medicine individuals who can legally transport this medicine and have extensive knowledge and has worked extensively with the grandfather and the Payote medicine. If you are out there, please contact me. We are ready. Did he just say Payote? Yeah. <laughs> the hell is that? That's not a word. That's right. Payote. It sounds like he, yeah, burr, like he a, burped. Looking for a Payote. He's and, making you know, what, words up. And he's like, what's he want? The FBI to come and find him? You know, oh, I've got a whole pile of it right here, but I need someone that has a license that can actually legally Jesus. transport it. And it's like, dude, you're just saying you're in Texas and you've got a bushels of, of this, you know? <laughs> and he keeps saying, payote, payote. <laughs> it's pronounced peyote, mm -hmm. pe, like peyote, like in the word pendejo. <laughs> Yeah, and we don't say payote, we say peyote. So he made he just made a completely new way of pronouncing a word he doesn't know uh, it's to make himself sound like he's one of the people. And he yeah. says, we call it grandfather, mm -hmm. and others call it payote. No, they don't. Nobody calls it that. And there is no such word as a pie okay? <laughs> Jesus, what a clown. <laughs> I don't know how people fall for this stuff, but there are imp important people. They're, they're not important. People that have been elevated by wealth or by celebrity status out, out of Standing Rock uh, that are promoting this crazy nonsense and that have supported and promoted these people, funding these people, etc. I think that those people need to be held accountable too. At the very least, they need to be looked at very critically. Um, he then goes on. This, this is not the last of his crazy mm -hmm. stories that mm -hmm. he invents out there and the crazy stunts he claims to be pulling or is trying to pull. Um, 
next he sa- he inserts himself into a death. Dun dun dun. Just like there was in the Marcus Mitchell, there was a death. Oh yeah. There was a death here too. Mm-hmm. Except these things are always made up by these guys. I mean, they're just making it up as they go along. Here he posted about this medical emergency, and what did he say? He said, uh, medical emergency on the Rio Grande. I ran into two American individuals, and one of their friends had an accident and lost his life on the Rio Grande. We are now calling for emergency medical help. I am okay and not harmed in this happening to strangers that I ran to, ran into on the Rio. How narcissistic do you have to be? He says, I'm okay. To be like, don't worry, everyone. I'm okay. I'm okay. Or is that all just for the drama of it? You know, there was this uh, same tone to the post, that fake x-ray that was posted by Marcus Mitchell where he says, don't cry. I already am. You know, this (laughs) stoic BS that they're like these strong warriors. Don't worry about me. (laughs) I'm fine. You know, it's like, Jesus. You know, um, people are genuinely concerned for people in that caravan. People are genuinely concerned for what is happening to indigenous folks. The people that I have been showcasing on my show are not them. They're concerned about themselves. They're narcissistic and they put themselves, inserted themselves first. Watch as he tells you about an incident about these two people he never shows you a picture of. Uh, a selfie and nothing he was with these people through this harrowing experience has no proof whatsoever that any of it happened here's that video i am okay let's just put that out there but we got a medical emergency here i was along the rio grande this morning early this morning i wait for one person to get aboard i am okay i lewis Monsvais, am not hurt but we do have a deceased individual on the rio grande and we're uh, up here this morning. I ran into the individuals on the Rio Grande. I ran into two males, Anglo men, American men, that have paddled down. Good, Athea, hi Athea, I want you to know that I'm okay. We have a medical emergency that uh, involves other people that I ran into on the Rio Grande this morning. Uh, Sansi and I were along the banks of the Rio Grande doing our work and we ran into some distraught individuals. There was two Anglo men who had been camping for the last several days. Uh, They yelled for uh, help or they called for me. They told me immediately that they had an emergency. Uh, Their friend is deceased on the Rio Grande. We are now here. Uh, I picked them up. Uh, We walked back to my automobile. We loaded them up and I just now got back down here to the store, to the rangers area, and they are summonsing for help. So uh, we do have a deceased uh, individual that's on the Rio Grande and uh, we're calling for help and support right now uh, I will be driving these individual Anglo men Americans back down to where I found them and uh, we're going to go and uh, uh, show and lead the Rangers to where this individual is at it is uh, on the Mexican side uh, and the story that they had told me this morning was that there are five individuals, two of them that I found, or they found me. Uh, They alerted me to an accident, a fatality that happened on the Rio Grande. They are with two other ladies, friends. There are five together in general. Uh, They said that their their, uh, friend was standing along the bank, along the edge of the silt. And uh, are, are you a ranger? Hey, Ranger! Ranger, Ranger! So I just picked up these two men on the Rio Grande. They have a deceased individual at their campsite, uh, Mr. Rankin. I picked them up at the um, at the crossing, uh, their Boquillas. Campsite where? Uh, they're two miles down, approximately. They said that there's two men, the two men that I picked up, the American man, uh, they have two ladies that are there with the deceased friend. They Is said, Americans or "Yes, sir. They're Americans. They're Americans, but they're on the Mexican side." He said. So please, uh, summons for some help if you would, please. It's at the. I gotta run and get a battery. Okay. 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 We got this guy here. Okay. He's also gonna help you out. 
he's on dispatch okay so uh, let me just tell you what happened and this is one of the things out here you know you have to understand that mother nature is uh, stronger than all of us in general and what we have here just to bring it uh, up to par is I ran into two individuals today on the Rio Grande and uh, they uh, flagged me down and uh, said immediately that they had a uh, fatality their friend was um, standing uh, next to the Rio and there's been a lot of rain and a lot of silt he was standing on the silt he had fallen in and uh, basically they think that uh, he has um, he has passed uh, it was immediate and this is one of the things we're down here right now this has just happened and I want people to understand that this Rio Grande in this area it is a beautiful area but it's a very tough area and anything can happen so people that are out there uh, you know if you pray pray for these people pray for this individual pray for his friends uh, if you sing sing for them uh, our heart goes out to this type of uh, incident uh, I'm gonna do just a quick live feed I want everybody to know that I am okay um, I was glad to be out there in the rural area I was glad to have run into these individuals and to me it was meant to be I was meant to be there and uh, um, I loaded them up I brought them down to the this area we're gonna go back to that area and we have to do the extraction uh, I'm gonna do all the part that I possibly can we just told the ranger so the ranger and the words are out we expect the law enforcement and we expect uh, people to come towards this direction for help they are in a very rural area I was also in this area that I was in is a very rural area very hard to get area and um, that's pretty much the live feed right now, but I want everybody to know through this live feed that I, Luis Monsvais, am fine. I'm not injured at all whatsoever. I just ran into a, a camping and a hiking party that does have a deceased individual. Don't worry about him. Do send cash, though. Yeah. If you have some money, PayPal it to him right away. But don't worry about his safety because he is fine. And, of course, why wouldn't he be? He isn't... He's at a, a resort. He's at a golf resort for yeah. very wealthy people. Uh, who put him up there? I don't know. I started wondering, who are the wealthy people that he's connected to where yeah. he would get access to this place and then claim it's Kelsey Warren's house and then he's out there, dun, 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 dun. After the oil tycoon, Kelsey Warren, because he's going to give him what fur, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, wow, what a, like... It's provable that he's not in a very rural location out in the middle of nowhere, pretend Indianing. Like, there's maps that I can show you that will explain exactly where he is. Um, do we have that next? No, it's the next scene. Oh. You still have, you have. I'll show you them in a minute, okay? Put a pin in it. Boop. Save that for a second away. Uh, we got some other things I want to show you real quick first. Um, the deceit, he did another post where he gave an update to embellish further on this catastrophe of the deceased man and wanted to embellish upon what he did for them and how he was instrumental in, you know, saving their lives or whatever. Looks like we're getting a lot of timeouts. Not really, not many. Is your it's, it's working pretty smoothly? Mm -hmm. Well, they got a few a few hiccups, but it's not really cool. prolonged. So here he is again. I'm just showing you a clip, a short clip, so you can hear that he is in fact doing what I claim that is on that video. Um, but you can go watch all of them in their entirety for themselves. And he really wants to embellish on the lie to make himself more heroic. Here's that clip. Update. Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. I'm at a place called Lajitas, Texas, right on the Rio Grande. The river is about a thousand feet behind me. 
So for those just joining, I'm at a place called Lajitas, Texas, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this place. I'm going to talk to you about the Rio Grande that's so close and why it makes it a hot spot to cross from Mexico into the United States. To give a little bit of backdrop about this town called Lajitas, Texas, and uh, a reminder, the Rio Grande is about a thousand feet, maybe 1500 feet, right on the other side of this road. I'm at Lajitas golf club and they have a little convenience store here there's one thing that you have to know about this town it's basically kelsey warren's town it is nudged up with a eight hole golf course or nine hole golf so course right this. up against this is um not the video that i wanted to show you oops the video i wanted to show you is one that goes along put the update one uh deceased update post do you see the the lighting his hair mm-hmm his clothes that uh, the way that the angle of the camera is and then if you go to the other one he's like sitting next to a um, so the video that uh, you um, are missing is uh, it, no, I don't see it in there I don't think you I don't think you imported it oh, or downloaded it that's bad yeah it's very it's sad it's sad um, but I, it looks like this, it looks like this is very different and I can't illustrate, I guess I won't be able to illustrate, uh, how he basically takes the opportunity to double down on his lie. Here's something that you should take into consideration that is happening repeatedly in these scenarios. It is the very law enforcement that uh, Albuquerque in Marcus Mitchell's case and uh, Texas um, in uh, this man, Monsevice's case, a.k.a. Luis Gutierrez's case, uh, where they're involving the authorities, whether they're lying about that or um, as, you know, they claim they're actually involving the authorities in fake made-up stories, that's a crime. It's a crime to report a, a crime that didn't happen. It's a crime to make a false, you know, kind of like the, the cops don't take kindly to that. That's not considered just a prank. You can be charged for that. And so uh, the fact that uh, people like Monsa Vice, like uh, Marcus Mitchell are willing to perpetrate these hoaxes and involve police, the potential of police is really uh, disturbing. That's interesting. Looks like we're having some uh, brief interruptions uh, from time to time on our live stream. Mm -hmm. And if that is a case for you, I apologize. Oh, yeah. When you uh, watch this back, though, if you watch this back, and I suggest you watch my shows back because they're so packed with information. Mm -hmm. um, I apologize that we missed, uh, which like we're having a, a bad technical day. Yep for some reason but you know what it is is we had a lot of material and that that can happen sometimes when you have lots and lots of material to put in um so uh the next post then would be our drum so very close to the location where he did that that live stream where he is giving the update um in that parking lot where he waves over that guy. Mm -hmm. I believe that's where he took this picture of this, of himself with his dog playing the drum. Hmm. He says, I can't play the drum very well today, but I played as loud as I could. And if you go to the next one, um, he then posts about how he found a canoe and gear and he's basically saying that this canoe and this gear belongs to the people that he found with the deceased body. That's right? right. Yes. Yes. And that he's going to rescue the boat. He does a video talking about the boat rescue that I'm going to show you in just a moment. And he says he found the canoe, their canoe, the people that he encountered with the deceased man that had the accident and their gear and he says I brought it up the stream and then got help from friends in Mexico to bring the burro 
That means the donkey mm -hmm. um, to help get it back up the mountain and to a place where it could be retrieved by authorities. This was just part of the day that I documented. Right. He doesn't document the people that supposedly belong to this boat. I don't know if the people that uh, owned the restaurant and went on this trip with him really owned this particular canoe. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't look like a very fancy or expensive canoe. No. And since the man described in that accident and his crew were avid outdoorsmen and pretty wealthy from what I could tell, mm -hmm. I doubt that really is their canoe. Hmm. And even if it is, the way that he is transporting it is going to just, it destroyed the canoe. I'm yeah. pretty sure that that canoe is toast. So <laughs> all that this is, is uh, it was like, <laughs> it is the most hilarious video that you will see of a canoe rescue in your entire life. Well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Let me, let me put it this way. If you find another funnier canoe rescue video than this one, please send it to me. Hmm. If you are we still timing out all the time no. here? We were for a minute, but we're fine now. So if you, I don't know if it, I'm right about whether or not this is the funniest canoe rescue video, the 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 the, the rescue of a canoe, not people in a canoe, like saving the boat itself because that's important right the canoe rescue video that you find that is funnier than this is something i definitely need to see <laughs> so here's that tell me what you think after you watch this for those of you listening to the audio what you're about to hear is a man using a donkey or what really looks more like a mule or a horse mm -hmm to haul drag to drag a canoe fiberglass canoe up rocks up a hill up up, up the, brush, the side of a, a cliff full of gear full of gear and over rocks and rugged terrain really really rugged terrain that's what you're about to hear here's that clip okay so I was able to row the boat, their canoe, as far as I could upstream. And we're now motoring it up to the top to get safety. Espera, espera. Dámelo, dámelo, dámelo. Espera, espera. Dame, dame poco más tiempo. Poco más para arriba. Está bien, está bien, está bien. Está bien, está bien. There ain't no way I could have done this by myself. But Santi, get out of the way. But uh, we're able to rescue their boat. These are the individuals I ran into this morning way down there in that canyon do you suppose that the people <laughs> yeah people that own that canoe are gonna thank you yeah they're gonna whoa what happened to my canoe you know i rescued it <laughs> rescued the boat pulled it up the hill over the rocks through everything whose canoe is this canoe whose boat is this boat yeah really this reminds me of the level of stupidity of President Trump. Yeah. Who in their right mind, unless you were a freaking moron and didn't know anything about canoes or how to use them, would you drag a fiberglass canoe full of equipment, attach it to, I mean, it's probably really light and you could probably carry it with one person on each end mm -hmm. very easily without damaging it and it wouldn't be heavy. But they decided to stick it on the end of a rope and drag it behind a horse or a yeah. donkey. Oh my God, the level of stupidity is mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. I had never seen anything that, and you know, 
as he's doing it and watching the canoe bounce around, <laughs> like, yep. it never dawns on any of these people the damage they're doing to this canoe. Yeah, especially when they gave him instructions, would you just drag this up the hill? And then he'd be like, well, you sure you want to do that? Yeah. You know, maybe we could carry, maybe we could take the gear out and carry the boat up and then come back and get the gear, you know, something, but just like, just hook it up to a big animal and drag it up the hill and he's yelling at his dog, get out of the way, dog. You know, but it's like the dog's not going to cause any damage. He's already doing all the damage. Yes. We're motoring it up the hill, he says. Yeah. And he's so proud of himself. We managed to rescue the canoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, these people are a source of endless entertainment. If it if they weren't so dangerous, it would it would just be gut busting. Yeah, laughter. But you know the thing is, it's very serious. I have to. If I didn't laugh at these idiots, I would spend my time crying. But what they do is so transparently, so nakedly stupid, lacking in skill, nuance ingenuity intelligence knowledge that i would think it would be pretty hard to con the average individual that these people have any kind of authority or should be given any kind of position to advocate for vulnerable people or report or bring awareness to anything especially while they're pretend indianing like they seem to like to do so much and um he uh, posted another video with his, so he was so proud of his dog, Stansi, Chansi, or whatever her name is. So proud of Sansi mm -hmm. that he was yelling at her, Sansi, get out of the way, Sansi, <laughs> get out of the way. Don't wreck the canoe. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> this was an exercise in futility. He, if he didn't pay those people, then all three of them are morons yeah, because exactly. they literally just wasted time and destroyed a canoe for no goddamn good reason at all. Like there's, they had no business doing any of that. He's like, oh, these, I'm so glad these guys helped me. I could have never done this on my own. You shouldn't have done it at all. It was the wrong thing to do. Oh my god. Anyway, here's the video of them continuing to drag this canoe. <laughs> Featuring Sansi the dog. Featuring Sansi. So, as you can see, we've managed to get the boat. Sansi! Come here, girl. I need water. Come here. Sunsy, come. Sunsy, come. You got my water, girl. Okay, go. So we managed to get the canoe up to safety. That's Mexico. This is the United States. <sighs> yeah, oh my we, God. we managed to get the canoe up to safety, uh, <laughs> shredded up the hill. So he's like, Sansi, Sansi, come, girl. Sansi, Sansi, come over here, girl. Ripping up this canoe is hard work. I'm That's right. thirsty. <laughs> Sansi, come here. Come. Go, Sansi. Go. Go. Yeah. Oh my God, these people, complete incompetence. And they're so proud of themselves mm -hmm. for what they're doing. They can't even take care of inanimate objects. <laughs> Why would you trust them with any sort of life at all? Mm -hmm. I'm scared for Sansi. Yeah. Anyway, uh, um, here's the story in the Dallas News. Um about the man edit low is his name by the way the video that you forgot to insert where he was giving the uh, update on the deceased mm -hmm. he talks about the two women and the two men and he says that uh that's it right there um one of the women 
no, the two women were left with the deceased body while the two men canoed to get to a point where they could, you know, find a way to get to where he was so that he could save them, you know. Do you want it? Yeah, if you got it, let me sh- let's, let's show it to him. Yay! Let's find it real quick. Whoa. Why did it do that? I have to do a new one. Oh. One moment, please. One moment, please. Well, anyway, I'll tell you what it's going to do. Um, and he talks about these people, these individuals, and he never says their name. He doesn't even know the name of the guy that died. He then talks about them later on, as I'll show you, like their family now. He actually says that they are family now. But he doesn't know who they are. He says one of them's name is Nick and the other one. Oh, here it goes. Hold on. Just keep on talking. Okay. So um, he says some really weird, random crap about how you should never leave two women alone by themselves while these two guys went off. They should have left one guy and one girl, and then he. They should have left with the other woman and the man who should to go to get help. Or it was, I don't know, where he gets this nonsense from, or why he's giving people advice on mm-hmm. anything. Because, like, any advice he gives you is probably the opposite of what you should do in any emergency situation. Here, we Here go. is his update. Let's see if I can do some All right, I'm gonna try this twice here. And this is an update of the uh, deceased individual that's up the Rio Grande uh, this morning. If people did not see the video, I was uh, out on the Rio and I ran into two American men, Anglo men, that uh, were in distress and they were on foot and they approached me and they said that they needed help. They said that they had a deceased friend that was down the Rio, about two miles down the Rio Grande. And if I could take them to, uh, uh, if I was able to take them to a facility where they could report the accident and the injury. I picked them up. We, uh, um, um, we, um, uh, motored, uh, we, we hiked back out, uh, got in my vehicle, which was the closest vehicle and um, ended up driving them down. Uh, After that point, they called authorities and uh, yes, their friend is deceased. Uh, Very tragic accident. Uh, After I dropped them off, I went to go and pick up their, um, their canoe and their possessions that were down the Rio because I knew the I knew the area and I knew the facility. Uh, I knew both people on both sides of the Mexican uh, Rio Grande. It was a very secluded area through the canyon, Gonyon. I uh, ended up picking uh, their canoe up and I uh, rode it as far as I could upstream. Uh, one individual and my dog. I ended up uh, obtaining their canoe and their possessions. Uh, and I have video of all the stuff that I've done and I'll go ahead and show the video as it played out But I just want to do an update let everybody know that I'm back. And I'm okay The possessions are in, in uh, their possessions now. I'm here with them. The law enforcement is here with us also as well uh, Their canoe is safe. We got the canoe on um, on the American side and uh, the law enforcement has put the launch boat in and uh, Law enforcement is, of course, talking to the individuals. We have become brothers very quickly. Uh, in such tragedy, you become friends and brothers uh, immediately. And that's one of the most important parts that I learn here. Uh, despite our color, our creed, our religion, our background, our, our, uh, our origin of region, when tragedy hits, people connect. And that's one of the, the things that uh, is um, is something that I see that I've seen over and over and over again. When tragedy hits, people unite, people gather together. And uh, in a sad day where they lost their friend and we lost the comrade that I did not know and I've never met before, uh, I just happened to be in the right place. And this has happened dozens of times in my life. Uh, I have been in this position many, many, many times uh, with uh, deceased. And uh, it, just, it just felt right 
that these men, it was like a dream, they came out of the hills in the valley and they said, we need help, our friend is dead. And to me, I was like, why me again? Why me again? Why am I here again? And at that point, uh, I immediately uh, took them out, uh, walked them to the general facility of safety, took them to my automobile, and uh, took them here to alert the authorities. The, alert, the authorities are putting the boat in, in the water now to go retrieve the individual, uh, our deceased friend, uh, our comrade, a river rafter, boater. Uh, he is deceased. Uh, they were out there for about a day and a half, and uh, he, has, he, dece he was passed yesterday. So I want everybody to know that I am in good spirits. I am honored to be in this position and uh, we will grow and we will learn from uh, what has happened to us today. Uh, I was able to motor their, um, the, row their canoe upstream uh, for a while till I was wore out and then uh, I got the macate, uh, excuse me, I got the rope and uh, walked, the, walked the rest of the distance and then I uh, summonsed uh, my friends on the Mexican side of the border to uh, please bring their burros, their donkeys, uh, they brought their donkeys over and they helped me the rest of the way take it up the mountain and over the mountain and down to the parking lot. So um, the tragedy that we saw today is just a reminder how precious life is, a reminder how precious we are to each other. Despite any direction, where you're going, what path you're taking, we are precious commodities. We are all miracles here for a moment's notice and we'll be gone in no time flat. So as the earth has taken our brother, we'll lay homage and uh, remember the lessons that we've learned today. And we will take that and we will put it in our, our pouches and we will walk forward in life. We will walk forward in sorrow and we will walk forward in strength uh, from what has happened to us today. Uh, so that being said, uh, we're going to sit here with our friends, our newfound family, and we're going to uh, stay with them throughout the evening until this is put behind us and the authorities have uh, obtained everything that needs to be obtained. Uh, that's it. Uh, everybody go in, uh, in a great way and go in great strength. Uh, don't, go, uh, don't go weary. Don't go... Uh, uh, you know, you have to use force sometimes. You have to use uh, things in your life that you think you could never do. Uh, this, this life is going to give you, uh, excuse me, this life is going to give you some obstacles that you may think you'll never be able to cross. Trust me, when your instincts kick in, you'll be able to conquer it all. You will be able to do everything that uh, you have trained yourself to do when the time comes. It comes instinctively. And they told me the story now that I get back here. They ran into one more individual that was further down there and they asked them for help and the individuals declined them. If anybody asks you for help, don't decline them. I would not ask you for help if I did not need it. So uh, remember, when people desperately need help, don't turn your back on them. Don't do it because it'll come back on you. I promise you it will. Uh, today we'll go uh, now and we'll wait for the uh, rest of the authorities. Uh, that being said, I just want my family and friends and everybody to know that I'm, in, uh, I'm doing good. And uh, I've, uh, I'm very tired, I'm very exhausted, but uh, it's a good exhaustion. And it's a, it's a, it's a heck of a, uh, a life that uh, we're given uh, and granted. So that being said, remember the real in the water will take you. There's no doubt that Mother Nature is the ruler here on our planet and in the solar system. Mother Nature is just not on our planet. It is all around us and she is the ruler here. We are nothing. We are nothing without her and that is one of the most important things. When I was sitting down there by the Rio and I was walking and I was pulling that canoe and rowing that canoe and I was thinking about these men and thinking about these gentlemen, I knew nothing, nothing was more important than this moment in my life. Nothing in my past mattered. Nothing in my future could uh, uh, help. Okay, let, let, let's talk about that just for a second because, oh my God, that was crazy. Yeah. So 
he says, and this is very strange, this is odd to me, when tragedy hits, people connect. Well, if you're a disaster vulture, I guess that's how you uh, justify what you're doing to people because people are not there in a tragedy for your amusement and amazement, okay, disaster vultures? They're not there so that they can make you feel good about the, the, you know, the good works that you came out there to pretend to do so that you could um, go on your disaster capitalism vacation and mm -hmm. get a t-shirt after you became an everyday hero with one of these fake organizations that are running around purporting themselves to be skilled uh, first responders. And then he says this crazy stuff about how what happened was like a dream. You'll hear him say that again. How is it like a dream that you, you found these people and somebody died? Mm -hmm. What a weird way to talk about something that involved somebody dying. And then he says, it just felt right. What the hell is that? I mean, who the hell talks like that, Duke? No. Who says it felt right upon finding individuals that were traumatized who needed to go and rescue their, their friend who just died? recover his body basically in a horrible accident no too and plus the uh, plus he keeps on talking in the we we this and it's like all these videos i've seen he seems to be alone yeah you know it's like uh, where are these people he's talking about well he's hired the two guys that drag the canoe up the mountain you know and drag it through the rocks and stuff but other than that he's like he's talking the we like he's this crew of people yeah he, he seems he's totally full of solitude even when he's talking about the people that he's so supposedly rescued we don't even see them. We don't we don't hear, you know, we, it, and that one we heard people talking in the background, so he obviously is around different people, but he's totally going solo and all this stuff. And then he like pans the, the uh, live stream over to where there's like a table of people mm -hmm. and he goes, there's somewhere over there talking to the cops. It's just like zip, zip quickly. Back, to, back to me. Mm -hmm. And that is what this is really about. All of this made up nonsense is about him he has to transport peyote he has to traffic people across the river he's finding the locations he's going to report on it he's going to find the information and let you know he needs you to send him money to do it mm -hmm. and he says why me again it's not about mm. you luis gutierrez it's about the person that just died. You are making it about you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these disaster vultures have the same M.O. He's like, why me? Why me again? Why is it happening <laughs> to me? And then he goes, I was meant to be there. And he tugs on this pouch that he's wearing around his neck. And he mm -hmm. goes, this is why it's destiny. I'm supposed to find all the dead bodies. Yeah. These people are strange. He says, um, there is a discrepancy in the story of what he says happened to the man who fell and he broke his head. And then the, the you know, he, they did the CPR on him for an hour and a half, he says, right after he makes the mistake of saying he died right away. Yeah. And then he goes, uh, oops, like, because he shared the uh, article in the Dallas um, news that I'm going to be sharing with you here on our show, the link to, so you can go check out for yourself, um, the story that appeared in the Dallas news. And <clears throat> it's about the owner of the, the restaurant celebration, um, which has been around for a very long time and by that I mean like at least through my lifetime. But it says okay. here he had he fell to his death behind uh, in the Big Bend National Park. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of the dude right there. His name was Ed Lowe. He was 69 years old from West Park, West Park, Texas. He went up for a five day canoe canoe ride down the Rio Grande with his four other people, according to the National Park Service. While scouting a campfire near the mouth of the Boquillas Canyon on Wednesday morning, Lowe fell headfirst off an embankment, the Park Service said in a news release. 
He did not respond to life-saving efforts from people in the canoeing party. Mm -hmm. Two people canoed upstream through strong currents to notify authorities who recovered Lowe's body later Wednesday. No mention of Louis Monsivice yeah, yeah, at exactly. all. It doesn't say the two people canoed upstream through strong currents and found a man who saved them, who decide, who took them to the authorities, who yep. summoned the rangers and brought donkeys mm -hmm. and rope mm -hmm. and vandalized their canoe. Exactly. <laughs> It doesn't say any of that, mm -hmm. but he wants to insert himself in the story and be the hero of this story somehow, which just is a, a tragic story of a guy that fell to his death. Yeah. Now, who would have, how would he have thought to even use this story? How would he be connected to this location of opulence and wealth, this very posh um, golf course resort on the border? Um, I think I have an idea. I think I have a theory of, of how. Oh, yeah? Um, and who. Mm-hmm. Her name is Marianne Thompson Frank. Oh, her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You remember her, the Nexus lady? Yep. The billionaire mm -hmm. of inherited wealth that paid a, a lot of the people or su supported financially um, the work of this. Wesley Clark, yep. Christina oh. Hollenbeck. Phony. A lot of the people that were directly involved in putting Kathleen Bennett falsely in a jail for six months mm -hmm. and for helping to put this complete charade out there um, about some elder abuse that never occurred and participate in a kidnapping of an old lady and putting her in a hospital and leaving there, her there to die. <clears throat> it's crazy, but it's true. It happened. We managed to exonerate that woman, but there was a lot of people including people that are included in tonight's show that tried to uh, kill the messenger when we were telling folks that the story that everyone saw nationally in the media about this woman at Standing Rock was false and that we had the proof and the evidence that it was completely false. And the people that wanted to continue to peddle the lie, which they must have co-signed because they were part of, continue to try to obfuscate the story and tell you that we were lying, that we were wrong, that we were toxic, mm -hmm. as Myron Dewey of Digital Smoke Signals called me, and so on and so forth, because they wanted to not only kill the messenger, they wanted to kill the message. Yeah, exactly. And they did not want to be the authors of the lie. Marcus didn't want to be the author of a lie after he was caught, but see, as I told you in my other um, my show about that, you don't do anybody favors when you give them a pass when they're lying. Mm -hmm. You're helping to create a scenario where people get worse and they get away with it. So they think, where are the boundaries? There are none. And they go on to do crazier and crazier and more criminal and more dangerous things. And we are creating the environment in which we are cultivating for that to happen just like Trump was cultivating the terrorist attacks in this country that occurred in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. So I think that it bears saying and calling out that this lousy behavior is dangerous and that um, it is ridiculous and uh, we need to try and stop it, not excuse it. He said... Um, he summoned his Mexican friends? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell does he think we are? That's right. Do you see the condescending way in which he talks about the people that he had vandalized that canoe with him? Mm -hmm. With? Like he's talking about them like they're his his subject. That's I right. summoned them That's right. to Hold bring in. their burros. Yes. Mm -hmm. What the hell does he think mm -hmm. he is? And he said, I lay homage with the my new family for the the deceased he doesn't even know who edlo is yeah he's no idea who the people associated to him are but he wants to claim some connection and he wants to claim that they're his family why did he start start sniffling there at that the end that too. yeah you know who that reminded me of uh, remember that video of marcus that was being shared the live stream that you couldn't see that was being shared 
by John Gonzalez. Remember he was... Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. That's right. To make the tears run. Looking into the light. Mm-hmm. Looking up like that. Mm-hmm. He kept doing that. That's what it reminded me of. Same, same modus operandi. He's like, I'm okay. Don't worry about me, everyone. I'm... <laughs> I'm tired. I'm exhausted. It's exhausting what he had to do. He's hiking in the wilderness. He was destroying a canoe. <sighs> and then he, he just starts talking nonsense like mm-hmm. a crazy person. It, what, I don't know what he's on. Did you hear what he said? Mother Nature is the ruler of the earth yeah. and of the universe mm-hmm. and the Milky Way. It's like... I think no, that, dude. I think that's a, the, the bushels of peyote he's sitting on that's <laughs> coming through there. Where does he make this stuff up? I don't know. So let me show you where he really was so we could just put to oh. bed this nonsense. There was one, one, one post that you actually you said that. Oh, yeah. So remember I told you there was a connection to Marianne Thompson Frank. Remember that article he shared on his page talking about this uh, accident? Um, this was posted on Monsevice's page and it was also posted on Marianne Thompson of Frank's page. Hmm. And the Dallas News Ed Lowe was an actual picture of that post by Louis Monsevice, not the, not the article. Did you take a screen capture of the article and put it in there in place of the Dallas News Ed Lowe picture that was in the folder? No, I just have this one. Well, it, it, it that looks like you ma- you did it. Yeah. You screen captured that. Okay, so okay. there was an the actual picture that was posted by Louis Monsevice of this article on his page uh-huh. that was a post that I put into the folder to show folks. Um, so this is just the article, by the way. Okay. Um, but Louis Monsevice did also post this, and I wanted to show you that he did because I wanted to show you, for you to be able to compare the fact that Dallas News uh, article Lewis posted on his page is the oh. same well, exact it's, Dallas it's News. It's later in the script. But this oh, there it is. Yeah. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's him. That's his post. Mm-hmm. Sad to have witnessed this unfold, he said. Love to him. He doesn't know Ed's name. Love yeah. to him and all the families affected. And then, in, you know, he posts the article that Marianne Thompson Frank posted. Yeah. Same article. Exactly. And this is what she said. She's from Texas, y'all, remember? Marianne Thompson Frank said, Oh no, Ed Lowe brought so much joy to our community. Which community is that? The crazy cult at the Menominee Menominee Institute? How come all of these cult leaders have these wacko institutes of pseudoscience and fake religion weirdo stuff? Yeah. So bizarre to me. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed that? Definitely. <laughs> they all got these weird centers of like, even Kanye was like, we need to have these centers for the blah, blah, blah. So, um, Thompson Frank then says in her post about Ed Lowe, Frank Dallas News, she says, he brought so much joy to our community via his restaurant and he played a major role in the life of my dear spirit brother, Coke Buchanan. Hmm. Coke Buchanan. I don't know Who's what that, that is. Yeah. It sounds like Brock Turner or mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that, isn't it? Yep. Um, a lot of the people that Marianne Thompson Frank and who she surrounds herself with are very, she fetishizes Indians. She collects them. She likes, you know, she likes to think of herself as the high priestess of something in addition to being this, you know, uh, power tripping, inherited billion, inherited wealth billionaires. And um, she funded people like the likes of Ed Higgins and all of these people at Activate Now and all of the people uh, connected to the veterans stand for Standing Rock. So it's no wonder that uh, Louis Monsivice is like, hey, I happen to be here at this resort. I wouldn't be surprised if Marianne Thompson Frank got him uh, an in with the people he's, whose land he claims to be staying on. Mm-hmm. Probably Marianne Thompson Frank's his friends. Probably. He's an, if you go back to that uh, article 
Can you pull up the article of the Dallas News, Ed Lowe? And uh, go all the way to where it talks about Lowe. Okay. Um, how far did you read? So two people canoed upstream through the strong currents. Lowe was the founder and owner of Dallas's original farm-to-table restaurant celebration, the eatery on West Lover's Lane near Lemon Avenue, which opened in 1971 with the focus on local seasonal in a laid-back setting. An employee of the restaurant confirmed the news of Lowe's death on Thursday. Hmm. Um, keep going. And they talk about him being an eclectic thinker when it came to food and that he was doing things the right way and that um, he was featured in a magazine in the winter of 2014 um, and that, <coughs> you know, he was featuring a lot of, you know, farm to table uh, vegetables. And then it says that low, um, said that he was a licensed guide at the Big Bend National Park for years and he was passionate about the outdoors. You think a guy that was l a licensed guide would have wanted someone to drag his canoe yeah. up the side of a cliff behind a donkey? No. I doubt that. Mm -hmm. I doubt that somebody that would have been hiking or uh, or canoeing with a guy such as that would have uh, asked somebody as ignorant and unaware of their surroundings of where they were, like Luis Monsivais, a.k.a. Luis Gutierrez. Okay? Doubt it highly. I think this guy is full of beep. Mm. But also, the maps don't lie. Here's where he was at. So, you know, there is a picture of him in this parking lot where he's like, Ranger, are you right? Where are you, Ranger? So this is a map. Why don't you go and explain because you can see better. And yeah, I and, and, and also, you know, he was talking about how long it took. Yes. Right here, one of the trails from down of bringing the canoe up the hill. Yeah. It's a 10-minute walk. Yes. You know, and he's like, it took me three, four, five hours to go from here to there. Yeah. And so if you kind of reroute his um, his trip, here's another one all the way from, it's a 14-minute walk or by vehicle, 14-minute by vehicle from the recreational village. It would have be, it would probably be an hour and a half a walk. Yeah. But it's not that bad of a walk well, he still. Had, he had his Jeep up on the, on the tar road, you know. Right, which which he would have gotten into after the ten minute walk up the hill. It, it's it it's not, he's for him to be. I'm exa I'm exhausted. It's exhausting. Yeah. Exha oh, I'm tired. I'm very very tired. And you know, like I'm okay, everybody. I'm okay, but I am exhausted. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Um, really? Like. And then here's, here's a, the other one. Another, you, this is a 14 minute, uh, 3.7 mile trek. Trek. It's a little bit big. Let me make From Boquilla, Boquillas Canyon. And you can see uh, on the map yep. uh, on that that stretch is exactly f like around 14 miles, mm -hmm. right? Yep. From the mouth of the, the Boquilla 14 Canyon. minutes. It's 14 only 3. minutes. 3.7 miles. Um, from Boquilla <coughs> Crossing. Mm -hmm. Via Boquilla Crossing. This is not a huge, like, wilderness trek hiking into the mountains where he has to tra help transport these people and guide them out of there because yeah. they were lost. The guy and probably the people with him were avid uh, outdoors people, and it was a freak accident. Mm -hmm. It was a freak accident. And I don't really think he was part of any of it. This looks like the the place where he was at in that parking lot yeah. that he would have taken off from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, yeah, I think this guy is very good at embellishing. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, he's not very good. I oh, think yeah. if you just scratch the surface and look a little bit, you're like, oh, yeah, this doesn't really hold water. Mm -hmm. But I don't know uh, why people continue to sh to share these folks's uh feeds or support them or you know i don't know 
But again, it's very bizarre that they think that th that this is their right or that, you know, they're describing they keep finding more dead bodies and they, they're upping the ante and uh, it's kind of, it's gross and weird. It's like they're disaster, they're looking for disasters and making them up as they go along. Mm -hmm. um, here's a post that he made about being in the right place. And yes. he's talking about an update uh, about what happened again because he's got to keep telling you yep. updates about this thing this non-event that he's embellishing on that he did, I don't think he participated in. If he had, he wants to tell you so much about it, he'd have a still photo, a some proof, mm -hmm. anything. Listen to him talk about, and again, embellish about this thing that I'm pretty sure he made up completely. Works, perfect, all right. Um. So, it's been a heck of a day. I'm okay. And I'm doing well. Hi, Lois. I'm back up to Wi-Fi and service. And um, usually there's quite a few people that are piggybacking off of this area where I'm at, so my live feeds have not been able to work very well, but everybody's gone. I'm the only one on, and I hope it. I hope it. Uh, hope it works, because I want to give. Uh, I want to tell the story of today. It was a pretty remarkable day. On a lot of different levels. We learned a whole lot. Hi, Mary Cardwell. I hope you're doing good. We miss you. We love you, and we're with you through your battle. Remember that, Mary. You're thought about a lot because I know what uh, what you're going through. Good, I think this is gonna work and that's because nobody's on. So I'm in the laundry room of the facility here and uh, as you know, we've had a pretty trying day today. I think I got some people aboard, so let's just go ahead and just start with our story. What happened today It was kind of like a dream that I've had before quite a few times. <sighs> this morning I got up um, and again I headed for my campsite. Well, I call my Jeep my campsite. Uh, it's where I stay when I'm traveling is inside my Jeep. And uh, got up this morning and I had the draw to uh, go to a particular area, it's pretty secluded. And uh, I got pretty far distance. And as I unloaded my, my, my supplies, my backpack or my water gear and Sansi, and we started down the trail, um, I ran into, um, two individuals that um, were in distress. And this has not been the first time that this has happened. I have had this happen to me multiple times. This is my 14th time. And one of these days I'm going to write down every time that something like this has happened to me. And I have them in my mind. Uh, the situations, the days, the events, the people. I was again at the right place at the right time. I think it's a gift. It's not a curse. I think it's a gift. I feel that I know how to handle it and that's why I'm put in this position. I feel that it is um, I'm trusted with this event because in my past I did I did fairly well and I'm getting to understand it more and more. Um, I was in a very secluded region of uh, the Rio Grande um, with my drone and my gear and I wanted to continue to do about the crossings and the effects of the wall and show the beauty of the region. Uh, but before I really got to do anything, I didn't even take one flight. I didn't take one video. Um, these two men came up out of nowhere. And um, I got to know them very well today. 
and we have become family, so to speak, because of the tragedy that they went through, that I experienced. Um, the first thing they said was, please help us. My friend is dead. Uh, it's to me immediately registered as the truth, but in my conscious mind, I said, it's the truth. These guys are telling me the truth. But I asked, what do you mean he's dead? I stated, what do you mean he's dead? How did he die? That was the first words out of my mouth. How did he die? I needed that understanding of where they were at in their life, where they were at in their experience, where they were bringing me into in this dream that we were having this experience, this life experience. And they said, uh, uh, we were two miles down river and uh, he was standing on the embankment. He climbed up and he said, you know how it's been raining a lot and there's a lot of silt. I said, yes, and it's very silty and very muddy. I thought mucho lodo, a lot of mud throughout the Rio. His friends, there were five of them. There were the two men that I met this morning, Nick and I forget his name. They said he had climbed up while they were down by the Rio making camp. This was yesterday when it happened. It's taken them that long to hike and try to row back up the Rio. They said he climbed up on the embankment on the silt and the silt gave way. And he fell head first into a gully, into a crevice and he broke his neck. I said, is he dead? I wanted to make sure. He said, yes, they were confused. He said, yes, I think he's dead. He stopped breathing after a very short time, five minutes. He said, we tried CPR on him for an hour. And I can understand that confusion. I've been through that. I've seen it personally. I've witnessed it, I've been through it. So I understood that they were telling truth and that they were in shock. Okay, let me just uh, break a couple of things down here for you. He's talking about an event, again, I don't think he had anything to do with. I think he saw the article. I think he, he saw it on Thompson Frank's page and was like, oh, like I'm in the vicinity, I could claim it. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Marianne Thompson Frank and people associated with the Nexus group gave this guy a place to stay. They've been giving uh, support in many forums to many of the people associated with the Standing Rock thing. Now they're getting involved in the caravan crisis and they're putting already vulnerable people at risk. Mm. Uh, you know, immigration lawyers uh, know that uh, there are a lot of people that are ready to exploit a situation like this. Please, for Christ's sake, if you have a problem, uh, go to an experienced, trained, and real immigration attorney for assistance. Don't go to somebody that says, oh, I could do it if you pay me, and mm -hmm. um, they don't really know because they could end up screwing things up way, way worse. It's worth it to do it right it matters and it is in, in many cases these things we're talking about in terms of undocumented vulnerable people refugees people asking for asylum it's a matter of life and death literally quite literally um and we're talking about people's most precious uh family and friends and you know your babies and your 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 mothers your sisters that's what is in at stake here so we can't have folks that are um, like aves de rapiña, like vultures trying to exploit the situation for their own personal gain, like Louis Monsivais, like Marcus Mitchell, and like many of these folks who 
excuse me, I know it makes people mad that I'm talking about them and exposing them. Everybody got mad at me when I started talking about Ed Higgins and Miko Mm -hmm. Hayes. And they got mad at me when I talked about Terrence Daniel and his affiliation with these folks. I'm going to keep bringing it up because they keep coming up in the conversation. And I'm not going to allow them, these people that I know to have been involved in crimes that happened right here in the North Dakota area that they framed innocent people that defrauded people they have raped they have you know like these are crazy uh, dangerous violent people in some cases I'm not going to uh, keep that to myself uh, and not warn my community it's my duty to make sure my community knows and it is I believe your opportunity if you hear this share this program on your Facebook pages share it out on your social media so that people can hear this, go to kpppfm.com, listen to the other shows about the disaster vultures and where they've been and what they've done because they're going all over. They're going international. They're going to every disaster, every march, every crisis they can find. Mm -hmm. And they are astroturfing their company, organization, brand, personality, what have you on top of it. And no... Uh, we are not for your consumption. These these migrants are not for your consumption. The disaster areas are not for your consumption. He then says something very bizarre. He keeps talking about it as a dream for him. This yeah. is a dream. Was it, wasn't that the dream of a wake or something like that also? Yes, yes it was. Mm, mm-hmm. That's where they're getting these dreams from. <laughs> he says, I've had many dreams like this. It's happened to me many times. In fact, he says that he's, I don't know if he says he's found dead people 14 times or if this particular dream of finding, it's a very weird specific dream to have that you find a dead guy. Yeah. Um, But he says that, you know, this tragedy, tragedies bring people together. And while that may be true, especially if you help someone, uh, it's kind of like playing off of the old trope where, you know, some person that lives across you know the the country or the on the other side of the planet found out that you needed a an organ and they had the or bone marrow transplant and they matched you and they like gave you bone marrow or or you know half of their kid mm-hmm. one of their mm-hmm. kidneys or half of their liver or something like that exactly. and then they're bonded for life this is not that they tried to make people have that kind of experience inorganically uh, out at Standing Rock, they tried to bond people to the idea that they were all now keyboard warriors or water protectors, and they're supposed to stand up together to defend these protesters and whatever new venture they're on, wherever they may be out, these water protectors, whatever they may be doing, without examining it and without holding anyone accountable. And I think that that's wrong. Mm-hmm. Not just um, just because people think I'm progressive. It doesn't matter. You still have to call out what is wrong. I call out Trump and his administration all the time. I call. And by the way, if you really want to learn about immigration, if you really want to know more about what's going on at the border, don't take the opportunity of a tragedy to capitalize on what's happening to get a photo op with a bus full of children in barred buses like, uh, you know, Mary Ann Thompson Frank did. When Mm. that tragedy was occurring and they were busing those children. Yeah, exactly. Don't take the opportunity to be a vulture to go get your photo op in Puerto Rico like Chelsea Lyons Kent, like Ed Higgins, Mm -hmm. like all of these other people that go there supposedly to report, supposedly to help. But in many cases, they're just taking up resources that the people of the island, the people of the disaster zone, and in this case, uh, the people that are on the border or that are crossing the border need and don't give it just five seconds of your attention while people like Luis Monsivais Gutierrez are raising money for it care enough to educate yourself more and more deeply I have done so many shows for years about this go to kppfm.com type in immigration I've interviewed people that have gone to detention centers Mm -hmm. I have um, personally gone and translated for and helped attorneys Uh, with people that locally um, are in detention. I've helped raise awareness and funds for the local um, bond uh, bond to get the bond fund to Mm -hmm. get people out. 
Um, we have also uh, done a number of shows on the history of the, the racist history of immigration. I've written a very long article that you can find on mexi-can.org. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it also I've shared it along with the shows that I've done about immigration. But also we've looked at uh, detention centers, abuses in detention centers that have been going on for years, guys. Sexual assaults, hunger strikes, uh, solitary confinement, um, keeping kids with uh, in, in jails, essentially, um, and many of these facilities along with their parents. Uh, but that is also cruel and wrong, and according to the Flores decision, should not be allowed to occur for any more than 30 days. Uh, and and it's n- it hasn't been getting enforced properly. And when this Trump administration came in, they didn't just try to um, drag out their position like the Obama administration sa- did, trying to renew its licenses for these services, for these detention centers that should, under the law, not even be allowed to exist. But instead, they doubled down on this idea and decided we're just going to rip babies away from their parents for no particular reason, deport their parents so they, they can't be reunited, lie, hide the paperwork, do the processing in the worst possible way, and then um, destroy these kids' psyches forever, like break their, you know, break, break their little minds and make them ass- assimilatable. Mm-hmm. But, you know, along the way, when you do that to a child, you also make them... Uh, you abu- you, you've abused them and you've caused them permanent trauma. They may have a lifelong inability to uh, associate. They may uh, turn to drugs and alcohol. You are causing such a, an immense psychic pain that, um, you know, this country is going to have a reckoning with what it has done to these children. And it's going to be, it's going to look very ugly. Uh, because these kids are going to be mentally broken from what the, the abuse that, that that has been heaped upon them for no reason, absolutely no reason, <laughs> didn't have to happen. But do not think that you're going to learn or improve the awareness of or uh, give the necessary support to the people that this is happening to all of the time and has for decades and decades and decades. Educate yourself better. My website is a good place to go, but there are many others as well. And there is just a slew of documentaries and movies that have been made about what's going on. Um, Articles that I've shared along with the stories that I've done on this on kppfm.com. And that's what I would recommend. This, This is pure and simple exploitation for fame, fortune, what have you. And it is not about the people that he claims to be saving. It's about mm-hmm. him. It's it's about these narcissists. It's about their five, 15 minutes. And they want to draw those 15 minutes that they had out at Standing Rock into years, into forevers. He tells these lies about how the guy stopped breathing after five minutes, but they still gave him CPR for an hour and a half. And then he realized how stupid that sounds. <coughs> and he goes, that's confusion. I understand that confusion because... I had that confusion. <laughs> I experienced that confusion. I'm like, really? Are you confused right now? Yeah. <laughs> it seems you are. Yep. You sound very confused. <laughs> um, and then he talks about what their interaction was like, and it is the most bizarre and fake conversation. He didn't. He he says he was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. I was at the right place at the right time. No, I don't think that that is a coincidence. You're a crisis actor. Mm -hmm. You put yourself in the places where you're going to go and film yourself doing something completely fake. I mean, you've done it before. It seems like you've done it before. Oh, yeah. And it continues to be something that you want to do again and again and again and again. Because that conversation is just so damn fake. He goes, the guy says, please help me. The first thing he said to him is, please help me. My friend is dead. <laughs> Remember Bill Running Fisher saying that when he found the Mary Trujillo, she was only speaking in Lakota, which yeah. is a language she never learned because she <laughs> went to boarding schools mm-hmm. and they were trying to assimilate her. Mm-hmm. And he also said that she said the one thing she did because he messed up and he goes, first thing she said to me was, help me. That's right. And then he went on to tell the big fat lie that she only spoke in Lakota. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you mean except for the word help? Yeah. And exactly. then it was like, oh, dirt, dirt. 
Oh, yes. This guy is that kind of stupid mm-hmm. because they can't even keep their their lies straight. Exactly. And then he says, the guy said, he says to him, what do you mean he's dead? Yeah. How did he die? How did he die? What person finds two people that go, help us, our friend is dead. Why wouldn't you say, please come, come. we need to have, they didn't, but they weren't, they weren't asking for this guy to come to the place where the dead body was. Yeah. They wanted his help to get to a location where they could get authorities exactly. to go back to the body. Mm-hmm. What? Yep. Okay. Right. Whatever. I guess it's more convenient for him. Mm-hmm. Um, but here is the truth. He is a crisis actor. Well, he's an actor, a B-list actor, and maybe you should stick to stuntman and be mm-hmm. D-list actor because mm-hmm. you are you suck at writing scripts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you can't get your your stories to to mm-hmm. be more a little bit more believable. He needs a director. You need a script writer and mm-hmm. a director. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't do it on your own. I mean, obviously, um, he uh, Dallas News. Um, right, oh, we already showed the mm-hmm. Dallas News mm-hmm. post that he posted about. Uh, mm-hmm. The article that Mary Thompson Frank posted. Yep. Uh, here's something else that he did. He said he posted he was going to sell his vote. This is something that's really bizarre as well. He was he tries to make money off of anything, mm-hmm. like a good snake oil salesman would, and he says that he is voting for the first time in his life. This guy's 50 years old, mm-hmm. but he says he's never voted in his whole life, and he said he's selling his vote for 500 bucks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a crime. Isn't yeah, that the is. voter fraud that yeah, the is. president uh-huh. keeps talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess he was right when it comes to this moron that keeps telling everyone all the crimes. He's, I'm trafficking people ac- yep, <laughs> across exactly. the border. I'm trafficking <clears throat> peyote. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, everyone. I need a poyarta. <laughs> 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 Oh my God, this guy is such a clown. Then he has um, a, or a connection to Orlando. Really? Yeah, the same guy that was, because I want you to notice, you really think that the, the this Orlando guy, I mean, for those of you that still believe that Orlando was just conned and Mitra were just, they were all just conned. They don't have any connection to promoting fakery and BS and and con men and con women, criminals, dangerous criminals. You really believe that? Well, let me show you another connection to this criminal. I just showed you Orlando Mm -hmm. was promoting Marcus Mitchell's uh, con story for money. Here he is, Orlando, with Monsivice. Mm. And how are they promoting these criminals and liars, uh, these con men that are just making up stories to get money from people. Yeah. Well, they're giving them water protector amulets, uh, you know, their warrior, warrior, uh, status like Mm -hmm. Marianne Thompson Frank gave to the, the kingpin that, uh, collected false statements against Kathleen Bennett and falsely put a woman in jail. Mm -hmm. Just like Marianne Thompson Frank, these people are handing out an Indian gift to you. Yep. Um, these water droplets made by none other than Dan, Dan the, the glass, glass man. man. Yes. Dan, the glass man. There he is. Um, Louis Monsivice holding his little water droplet and next to him is Orlando. And it says at the top on the post, look who finally got awarded a water drop. Water is life. So that's what you guys use him for. Yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta tell my audience that Dan the Glass Man that I talked about that also promoted this, n- this nonsense, and then also try to be like, oops, mm-hmm. well, I guess we got all, con- we all got conned. Oops. Yeah. And I told you that they did a piss poor job of oopsing, and that they didn't really apologize because they didn't really feel sorry for what they did because they were actually trying to promote this lie. But they got caught. They weren't sorry that it happened. They were sorry that you found out and that you might finally see them for the frauds that they are and stop sending them money. Stop supporting them and see them as the network of 
criminals mm-hmm. that they are. But it's up to you. You can keep sending them their, your money if you want to. Mm-hmm. Here's Louis Mons' advice, what he really is. He's a criminal. Here's his mugshot. Here's his real name. I want you to see from his mugshot. 150 pounds. Para las personas que están escuchando en español, I'm going to describe him. Les voy a describir a un hombre del que se deben de cuidar, del que se tienen que tratar de proteger, porque está en la frontera, está diciendo que va a cruzar a la gente, que va a ayudar a cruzar a la gente uh, por un lugar seguro en la frontera. Es un criminal. Uh, es una persona que explota las situaciones caóticas, las situaciones de emergencia um, para su ganancia, para su beneficio. Y también es peligroso. Es una persona que tiene muchos crímenes. This guy is a con man that has committed a lot of crimes. He has a storied history doing this. Okay, folks? So you should be aware. Tell your friends, watch mm-hmm. out for this dude. This is what he looks like. He has a mustache currently. He's also sporting a beard. But his change, he his look changes. He has uh, black hair, uh, black eyes, excuse me, brown hair. He's about 100 and I think he's a little bit bigger than 150 pounds, but around 5'8". Um, his name is Luis Gutierrez. Luis Gutierrez. Okay. He probably pronounces it Gutierrez. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, he also ha- is an actor. Remember I said, I don't think that that's coincidence. I think that's acting. It is. But he's uh, more of a, like a D-list actor. He's just like an extra most of the time. Mm-hmm. And he does stunts. He's been in a number of movies. Like, you probably won't recognize any of these. Yeah. Butcher Boys, <laughs> Strings, The Prince on, on Henry James's Head, and others. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's a bunch of other uh, movies that he has been in um, stunts in. Ah, uh, stunts. Um, sure, he was a horse wrangler, so he does horse types of stunts. There's pictures of him on horseback and... Um, he is, uh, so, you know, he pretend Indians in these movies mm-hmm. or he pretend Mexicans in these movies. He pretends lots of different things in these movies. So it was perfect to take him out to be a, um, you know, one of those things out at the camp. And he's been uh, the stunt performer for Machete, the um, mm. Mexican actor. He's been in Black Tino, True Grit. The Slaughter Creek, he's been in a lot of uh, movies that are like horror movies and, you know, just, you know, pretty D-list. Strider 48, Booze <laughs> or Buckets. Booze or Buckets. Yeah. Uh, Red Winds. Um, the Texas Triangle. Oh, dear God, that sounds like the Kavanaugh thing. Yeah, it does. The Texas Triangle. I don't even know when I want to. Is that a porno? Yeah. Wait, I don't want to know. sound like this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. I've already seen them on here. Sell the web series. Mm-hmm. Consequences, truth, TikTok. Show all episodes. And he was the stunt coordinator for that. Pastor Shepherd. He was the stunt double. Dance with the one. The Alamo. Oh, so wow. you know, you, do you see a theme emerging? Mm-hmm. So he plays an Indian, and he plays Mexicans in movies. Thus. He must pretend Indian all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, here, here, here he is doing a video stunt short as Machete. Take a look. It's only about a minute long. Thank you. 
So, you know, that's, uh, he looks like he can jump off of buildings. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, I'm all right. Don't worry. I'm all right. He jumps from one building to another. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's a, he knows how to do stunts. He knows how to jump off of buildings into pools. Um, in this one, he was running around with a machete, which he killed some dude with. Yeah. So he, um, obviously, uh, he's also, I, I found other YouTube videos with Louis Monsivice using his, uh, that's his like, um, Hollywood name. That's his, okay. Okay. That's his, uh, stage name. Yeah. His actor name, his actor name. And here are some other pictures of him acting. There he is in the back holding a big gun Mm -hmm. of some sort, semi semi automatic weapon. And there's a whole group of these commando looking guys. So he knows how to be a fake veteran. What else does he know how to be Mm -hmm. a fake of fake Indian and something like Looks like a, <laughs> some pretend Indian gear for a fake concert of some sort. Um, I don't even know what that is. Here's just a weird picture of him laying shirtless on his back on a horse uh, with his tattoos exposed. Okay. Of which he has many. Here he's pretend Indian and Indianing, walking that same horse. Okay. Looking very Indiany, right? Mm-hmm. Here he is being a zombie. Wow. Here he is with wearing a uh, war bonnet yep. without a shirt, shirtless, standing and half standing, half kneeling on the back of a horse as yep. the horse is walking. Mm-hmm. Here he is, uh, what looks like a period piece of like the mm-hmm. Alamo. Yeah. Exactly like the movie that he was in on his IMDb mm-hmm. where he's wearing a period clothes from that time and he's got some kind of a head scarf wrap, yeah. wrap on his head like maybe he was injured mm-hmm. or he's in a battle of some sort. Mm-hmm. And uh, here is another one of him in that same kind of gear for the Alamo shoot. And this one, he is like in some Western movie. He's got a hat on, a cowboy hat on. He's got a bullet belt around his, and he's standing in front of a wagon. There's a in a barn somewhere mm-hmm. with a bunch of uh, saddles, saddles yeah. behind him. Yeah. And this one, he's holding a machete, and it's called Shady, Shady Texas. Texas. And he's definitely looking like some kind of a machete mm-hmm. knockoff. And um, there's two people. Sh- Point, one Pointing. of whom is a gun, a, a, a cop, a cop mm-hmm. pointing guns at him. Mm-hmm. In this picture, he looks like he is murdering somebody. There's blood under a blanket. He seems to be covering up the bodies of the people that he just murdered with the bloody machete he's holding in his hand. And he's making a snarling, ugly <laughs> face at the camera. Mm-hmm. He sure do like acting. Yep. Here he is playing a homeless person who's obviously drunk. And laying on a, uh, in an alley and then on a partially on top of a mattress that's yeah. been thrown away called De- depth of fill. Yes. Called the depth of fill. Here he is next to the guy that he keeps stunt doubling for machete. Mm-hmm. So he actually knows this actor. You remember what other D list movies we saw that machete that machete was in? This actor? Oh, yeah. He's in Sean Stone's movie. What? Yeah. The friend of the guy that brought Wes Clark Jr. and the veteran stand for Standing Rock out to Standing Rock? Mm -hmm. Those people? Yep. Notice how these Hollywood connections keep popping up. Mm Mm-hmm. And they they circle right back around to Wes Lee Clark Jr. and his cronies and Maggie Day Mm -hmm. and Seven McDonald and the... Crappy B list, D list, C list, E list, F list actors <laughs> and performers and musicians and country singers and whatnot that you have out there that are now making a buck off of these PayPal and cre- created situ- scenarios that that never really even happened, that are not even real. While they take up the resources other people could be using, here is an article that I found about him. In the well, I believe this was one that uh, someone, um, one of the lovely people that listens and uh, sends stuff to our show to, um, you know, help us with the information mm-hmm. that we then present to you. 
in the secret life of a Hollywood pipeline protester. This was an uh, April 6, 2017 article posted on corenews.org. And it says, can you read it, man? I can try. Pipeline protesters have begun dismantling the West Texas protest, protest camp requesting bus fare from donors to return home as a Trans-Pecos pipeline is certified for operation. But earlier this year, Camp Trail Deer, another West Texas protest camp, was disbanded in the January after the owner... In the late la- January. Late January after the owner of the land kicked out camp leader and film industry veteran Luis Montevas. 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 Gutierrez. Gutierrez for his long criminal history. So he was kicked out of Camp Trail Deer. Wow. Because of his long criminal, criminal history. history. Same Luis Montevas. Mm-hmm. That's his stage name. He's wow. an industry, film industry veteran. Gutierrez was an experienced stunt coordinator and actor whose stunts extended beyond the big screen and into the real world of criminal activity. Hmm. According to a public record search, Gutierrez has served multiple stints in jail, most recently in 2015, and has faced charges including burglary of a vehicle, criminal trespassing, bail jumping, failure to appear, and others. Gutierrez has also recently received judgments totaling several thousand dollars in seminal in civil, excuse me, and small claims courts. After shutting down the Trail Deer camp, he began blogging anti-pipeline activities in Texas, Mexico, uh, New North Dakota, and Virginia. Wow. West Texas a famili- is familiar with anti-pipeline protest leaders with extensive criminal histories. Earlier this year, Pedro Rabago Gutierrez and Luis Monsivais Gutierrez joined together at a protest while both kept their criminal pasts hidden. Pedro Rabago Gutierrez is currently awaiting extradition to California for a laundry list of violent crimes, including rape, sex with a minor, selling drugs, and assault with a deadly weapon. Across the country, pipeline protests continue to suffer losses as pipelines become operational and they shutter camps. This could spell the beginning of the end of the anti-pipeline movement, not only in Texas, but throughout the entire country. Wow. So, folks. They need another game. They're going to move on to disasters. They're going to move on to other tragedies and other crises. And this is what they're literally doing as we speak. I want to show you about his pal that he that he hooked up with mm-hmm. at that at that um, uh, camp, which it says both of them were kicked out of yep. eventually because they found out about their criminal records. Exactly. Here is an article that I will be sharing to you from the Houston Chronicle in which they talk about Pedro Ragabo Gutierrez. Both of them have the same last name. Mm -hmm. Might they be related? related? Yes. I don't know. It says, how key pipeline protester dodged prison while leading a double life. Wow. They dodge prison while they lead double lives. Could you please go on, dear? Not sure if it all came in here. Oh, well, then I shall read it from my copy of the mm-hmm. article. And it is, again, the uh, Houston Chronicle. Ooh, I may have the wrong link here. Why don't you start reading that one, I honey? I have to make it bigger. I can't really see it. I. Uh, there we go. Apologize. The arrest stunned protesters at the camp where he was the head of security and sent the environmental groups with which the man worked into damage control. He was part of our circle. He was part of our family, said Frankie Orna, Orna, executive director of the Society of Native Nations 
and San Antonio-based environment and American Indian advocacy group, at which Gutierrez was wait, a wait, wait. I think that you have the wrong article. Or maybe, can you start at the beginning? That was the beginning. Where did it, no. Nope, that's not the beginning. You're missing two paragraphs there. Wow. You, you can't see, it. it's right there in that white part. So um, let me start at the beginning because I want you to see, show the picture while I show this because this is Pete Heflin, a.k.a. Pedro Ragab, Ragab, Rabago, excuse me, Pedro Rabago Gutierrez. His real name is Pedro Rabago Gutierrez. And just like Luis Monsivais is not Luis Monsivais and his real name is Luis Gutierrez, this Gutierrez has a fake name. It's Pete Heflin. Hmm. That's what his name, that's the name he was going by. And they use fake names to avoid for you being able to check on their record, on their background, and be able to figure out who they are and find out, oh, they have a violent criminal history. They're dangerous to people. But Peter Heflin was, a.k.a. Pedro Ragba, Rabago Gutierrez, or Pedro Gutierrez, I'm just going to call him for short here, um, was the leader of the Texas Environmental Movement. He fought against pipeline companies, decried corporate greed, and helped open the largest protest camp in West Texas, aimed at blocking the Trans-Pecos pipeline. Remember they had a skinhead Nazi guy, oh, yeah. Ryan, Ryan Laurie, open mm -hmm. the one in Flint? That's right. This is a, this is a pattern, and mm -hmm. I keep telling you about these patterns I'm seeing so that you can notice them too. It says, but as Heflin talked about protecting sensitive natural resources for the future, he was hiding his past. This week at a pipeline protest in Presidio County, sheriff's deputies arrested him, fingerprinted him, and confirmed that they had in custody not Pete Heflin, but Pedro Rabago Gutierrez, a man arrested and imprisoned multiple times in California for serious crimes, rape, drug dealing among them before fleeing the state at least 10 years ago as a wanted man hmm. that never saw justice for the things he did. Wow. The arrest stunned protesters at the camp where he was the head of security of mm -hmm. all things. Oh, yeah. Well, it's pretty common. It seems common pattern. Yes. Put the criminals in charge of security. Actually, they put themselves in. The rapists, the child molesters mm -hmm. in charge of security. Yep. In this case, it says the, you know... It sent the environmental groups with which the man was working into damage control. And that is what they have been doing. And that is what they are doing now, as I've been telling you about Mike Marcus Mitchell. And I'm sure it's what they'll do as I talk to you about, uh, you know, uh, Orlando Cruz mm -hmm. and Dan, the glass man, mm -hmm. and Mitra, and this guy, Monsivais, a.k.a. Gutierrez, and this other guy, uh, Pedro Gutierrez, and Myron Dewey. And Marianne Thompson Frank. Because they want to continue to do what they're doing. They want to continue exploiting and lying to people. Mm -hmm. And the only way they do that is that it that is is if they give themselves a pass for giving these people agency and power, for giving them uh, a, a po position uh, as a security person, right? They did damage control, said. Frankie Orona, executive director of the Society of Native Nations in San Antonio-based environment and American Indian advocacy group. He was part of our circle. He was part of our family. And this American Indian advocacy group, Gutierrez was the m member of the board of directors. Wow. And she said, but then again, we've always been about holding people accountable. Are you though? <laughs> And in this situation, he was definitely wrong. I am upset with him. Aren't you upset with yourself? Aren't you upset with the people that you put in danger because you didn't bother to check into this guy's background yeah. even a little bit? The Sierra Club said it too was surprised by the news, but right. urged the protest to continue, <laughs> noting that the Trans-Pecos pipeline was within two months of completion we don't see it as something that will deter the movement. Mm. Nope, they didn't see the Kathleen Bennett thing nope. happen as something that should deter the movement. They just tried to bury it and hide it. Mm -hmm. They didn't see there was a problem 
with the head of security at that camp being a rapist and another one of the heads of security being a child molester and rapist of a children. Not a problem. And these people didn't either. Apparently there's a pattern in that as well. Yeah. She said as a spokesperson for the environmental nonprofit, this pipeline is much bigger than one person. Energy Transfer Partners, the Dallas company building Transpecos, declined to comment. Gutierrez, age 56, has a long criminal record, according to the California Department of Corrections. In 1984, this is uh, Pedro Ragabo Gutierrez, the guy that teamed up with Luis Monsivais, mm-hmm. a man who also has a criminal record that yeah. I just told you about. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about his partner in crime here. He's This guy, uh, in 1984, he was sentenced to nine years for forcible rape. Wow. Seven years for forcible oral sex and three years for possession of a controlled substance Hmm. with intent to sell. Okay. The California Department of Corrections said, um, and he served the sentences concurrently and got out of prison about six years later, released on parole. Manape was also in prison. A lot of these guys have, uh, you know, they weren't in, they didn't just, you know, commit a, some kind of misdemeanor or something like that. No, like they were r- running drugs. They were, pr- you know, mm-hmm. they were the muscle for drug operations. They were committing child rapes. They were like doing serious, serious stuff. And um, he uh, managed to become the head of security at this <laughs> and wow. start this work on the board of directors of this nonprofit mm-hmm. for native people, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And these, and these environmental organizations are all working with him. Mm-hmm. They seem to have a problem with doing that again and again. Mm-hmm. Now between 1990 and 1997, Gutierrez was imprisoned at least five times for parole violations, according to corrections records. And in 1998, he was convicted of having sex with a minor. Wow. He went back to jail but then gained parole again in April of 2002. And at that point, he ran. Mm. And the Department of Corrections of California never heard from him again. Wow. It is unclear when Gutierrez resurfaced in Texas as P. Teflon, but four months ago, he galvanized a movement to block the Trans-Pecos pipeline. At a November meeting at the Texas Park and Wildlife Commission, Gutierrez and about 100 other activists gathered to protest the pipeline, which runs from near Pecos to Mexico and big by Big Bend Ranch State Park. Oh. Kelsey Warren, CEO of Energy Transfer Partners, sits on the commission. Hmm. And <laughs> at the meeting... The activists lined up to address the commission. Most spoke of the beauty of West Texas and the ruin of the pipeline's construction, but only one, this guy, Gutierrez, got Warren to agree to meet with him face-to-face in person. That meeting never happened, Uh but Gutierrez lambasted Warren on social media. You're a coward, and I'm calling you out, he said in Facebook video. Do you remember that? I, re- I kind of remember this stuff that was going on. Mm. In December, Texas activists, following the example of protesters trying to block another energy transfer project, the Dakota Access Pipeline in North Dakota, worked to open three West Texas camps. Wow. Gutierrez helped set up one, Two Rivers Camp, on private land near Big Bend Ranch State Park and became the camp's head of ceremonies and of security. Oh, and the head of raping. Uh huh. Gutierrez, who lived with his l- wife in Houston, in the Houston area, was the leader who stayed most often at the camp. Other activists said and became well loved. Hmm. People trying to rebrand themselves as good people yeah. after a long history of violent criming. This is horrifying. Mm-hmm. The article goes on, but about two months ago, Presidio County Sheriff deputy got a tip that Gutierrez, still known as Heflin at the time, was wanted in California under a warrant issued in 2007, according to the Sheriff's Office incident reports. So that day, as Gutierrez was waiting for his wife to get out of jail, 
after a protest, the deputy, the deputy Angel Vasquez, asked to see Gutierrez's ID. He gave the officer a social security card. <laughs> Velasquez let Gutierrez go, but checked the card, and it came back as a fake oh, ID. Okay. On Sunday, Velasquez ran into Gutierrez again. Gutierrez should have known they were onto him. Yeah, he should have gotten out of there. But uh, no, I'm glad he stayed because then he got caught. Mm-hmm. Protesters had gathered a pipeline construction at a, excuse me, they gathered at a pipeline construction site near Elephant Rock by the old ghost town of Shafter. <laughs> Shafter. And that's where they got shafted. Oh yeah. Velasquez called in called in the uh, the uh, warrant and uh, they arrested Gutierrez. Protester quickly protesters quickly surrounded Officer Velasquez stabbing his fingers, yelling and demanding to see this warrant. They defended wow. this criminal. Several deputies stood by, including Sheriff Danny Dominguez, whose body camera caught the whole incident. Velasquez loaded Gutierrez into a truck and drove off. They bark like little chihuahua dogs, Dominguez said in an interview, but they don't got no bite. <laughs> <laughs> These are real law enforcement officers doing wow. their job. The deputies took Gutierrez to the Border Patrol checkpoint 30 miles away to take get his fingerprints, and Gutierrez admitted who he was at that point. And uh, Gutierrez is now being held in a Presidio County jail awaiting his return to California. Some protesters, while shocked, hate that they brought up the criminal history. <laughs> they hate that his criminal history... <clears throat> he was a wanted... Cr- what is wrong with you people? Yep, exactly. Hated it. So you hate the fact that he's a criminal. As long as nobody knows about it, you're okay with putting people in danger. Mm-hmm. I guess that's how it works for you. Lori Glover, found of founder of the Big Bend Defense Coalition... Oh, they had like a water protector legal collection, yep. huh? Sounds like it. An owner of the land. Okay. Mm, on which the Two Rivers Camp sits, said the penal system was cruel and vengeful. Hmm. What? See how they try to attack the system? They violated the law? Mm-hmm. We're not talking about a misdemeanor at a protest, we're talking about raping yeah. ch- children. What the hell? She says, he said, excuse me. Oh, no, she. It was she. Lori Glover. He served his time, made a new start. He was on parole, and he left the area where he was supposed to be under supervision because he is a sex offender and a violent one at that. How does this lawyer person not understand that? He served his time, made a new start, I was unaware of any of this past history. Despite that, I feel very privileged to have worked with Pete. He- That's not his name. I I would rather have the fake phony person yeah, than the real person. So I'm just going to keep pretending his real name mm-hmm. is Pete Eflin. That's the guy who I liked. That's who I want. The, do you see the level of delusion here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the same thing that happened when I told people Olive Bias was a fake Indian. Mm-hmm. Desiree Kane is a fake Indian. Uh, Mike Fasick is a fake Indian. And I was like, no, he's the last Akiche yeah. We want our fake Indian. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I have to rip the Band-Aid off and tell you that, you know, do, do I have to tell these people there's no Santa Claus and that there's no... Oh, maybe. Tooth Fairy, the, mm-hmm. the Easter Bunny's not real. Like, seriously, how naive and childish are these folks um well it turns out pretty pretty naive and Mm -hmm. pretty childish and remember that connection to dan and orlando here's dan and orlando with their this is just one day's difference i don't know if you can find that picture again or if you even want to but you remember the one where louis monsevice is getting his water droplet it's on August 19, I believe, and it is just the next day that Dan is with, Dan the glass man, okay. is hanging out with, here's Lewis's picture. 
and it's on the 21st. So the next day after Orlando is hanging out with Dan the Glass Man mm -hmm. with gifting the, you know, drops of water to their pals, giving them props um, for being good water protectors, for ben being in uh, this um, campsite. But, you know, what you're also doing with uh, giving those out? You're validating people. Yeah. You're giving them awards and mm -hmm. you're saying, this is a good person. This is a trustworthy person. Then they can yep. pull it out. Just like, you know, Bill Running Fisher pulled out some coin and yeah, showed it to Mulaney and said, I'm a marshal. I'm a marshal. Here's my coin. That's not an identification that you are right. supposed to have for a marshal. Right. You are supposed to have a badge number. You're supposed to have a badge. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have. Real identification. Real identification. Yeah. And here is Orlando hanging out with another person that tried to obstruct justice in the case of Kathleen Bennett, Myron Dewey of Digital Smoke Signals. He tried to castigate our station and say that our reporting wasn't true along with people from the Water Protector Legal Collective to cast aspersion and to muddy the waters. And here is Orlando also propping this guy up. Be like, oh, Myron, you are the greatest. Yes, yes. And Dewey says to him, no, you, you're the greatest. Uh -huh. And uh, here's a little clip of this nonsense. I've been, I've been anxiously waiting to uh, get with this gentleman right here, Myron Dewey. <laughs> um, Good to meet you, brother. I'm, I've recently learned how to fly drones. Dean, Dean showed me how to fly mm -hmm. some drones. But we actually have something for you. We want to present you with a, a water pendant for your mm -hmm. for your services and your time up in uh, Oshetti and, and all the stuff that you did out there. You know, and uh, my, my, my friend, my companion over here, Dan the Glass Man, he's the, the actual creator of it. And it wasn't until Gathering of Nations, is, uh, after Gathering of Nations is where I met him. Uh, we're in San Felipe. Um, I'm pretty sure you know Bravo One. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're trying to help out with his campaign. We know that one of his charges got dropped. There's a couple more that, that's going on. But I've just been praying, and, you know, everybody's cases have been getting dropped. So, yeah. you know, every, everything's going to be good. And this is why I say prayer is so powerful. And, and at the end of all my feeds, I always say, don't forget to pray because mm -hmm. it's important. Yeah, and also, people are starting to see that. Also, something very important is that history was uh, repeating itself here. Yep. So those who control the media control the narrative. We were to control that narrative. Ish, you try to pay, pay, play yourself off as the, the, the news media. You're not the news media. These are people that are trying to pass themselves off as something that they're not. They don't, they can't even talk properly. They can't even speak properly. And yet they claim that they're doing media work. They don't yeah. know how to investigate anything. All they do is from what I've seen is spread fake information and make themselves the center of the story. Mm -hmm. Give themselves props for being the, uh, the activists, the people that are bringing awareness to things that many times they know nothing about that they're exploiting for their own gain. Do you really believe that it is a coincidence that Orlando was promoting uh, this false story this fraud by Marcus Mitchell and that he also permit was promoting another guy who has a violent criminal history who's currently perpetrating fraud somewhere in Texas, mm -hmm. Louis Monsivais, and that he's also giving props to and supporting a man who was lying and trying to cover up what happened to Kathleen Bennett. Yeah. This other fraud, this other liar, uh, Myron Dewey. You really think that's a coincidence that oh, no. that has happened so many times no, with Orlando? No, not at all. And Dan? Mm -hmm. Do you think that? No, I think that that is a pattern of behavior for these gentlemen. Um, and he's spreading lies. They're all spreading lies constantly. It's not just the little things. It's the big, big, big things like we got shot and oh, I cleaned the wound. Yeah. He's saying in this video with Myron that, you know, everyone's cases keep getting dropped. Mm -hmm. Nobody's cases have getting. We're the only case that I even know of that I can think of that got this actually got dropped. There might have been 
a couple of others. There's, there's a few, but far and few between, but there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plea deals. Mm -hmm. It's been like a massive run for a plea deal, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, the stuff was set up at the beginning. You know, we we're very naive. I was very naive. Mm -hmm. So I believed in these things were the things that were being put, in, put into place to protect people and all this. And you now this is a planned way to make bank. Mm-hmm. And um, these folks were helping each other to do that. They toe the line for each other no matter what, no matter what kind of hijinks or crimes or frauds or lies that they are spreading. So um, keep that in mind as you see them, cult disaster, culture, vulture, uh, ing all over the planet. Here is a post by uh, Frank, Thompson Frank, and you will see that she is sharing a live video that belongs to Myron Dewey. Okay. So make no mistake that she is behind a lot of these phonies that she is promoting and financing, probably including Louis Monsivice and definitely including uh, Myron Dewey. But of course, we also knew that she was supporting Christina Hollenbach and I'm sure uh, Ed Higgins and, and, and the veterans groups through Nexus and her billionaire inherited wealth. Mm -hmm. She was uh, adopted. She's a Mexican herself, but it's skin deep because she was adopted by white people and she knows little to zip about her culture, about her country. She travels all over the world. She has the ability to um, pretty much collect, purchase, and um, own for her entertainment uh, shaman, mm -hmm. which I believe to be fake because people don't sell ceremony if they're real. That's right. Um, from all over the place. She collects them from all over indigenous sites and sacred sites. Like she went to the pyramids in Egypt and she mm. went to the pyramids in Mexico. Oh, yeah. And she believes that her, uh, her parents... Um, saw in her that she was meant to become a priestess. And I told you in an, a show I did where I talked about how she has um, this weird um, delusions of grandeur about herself as a leader of her people and all of this other weird pseudoscience that she's got institutes that she's created for the Menominee, no many, whatever it is, uh, institutes, Menonseen institutes with her husband, um, on my show, unholy alliances. And I also talk about the connections between her and Wes Clark jr. And the veteran stand for standing rock and everything that they were about, everything that they stand for, why it's dangerous to have these people that are so, disconnected from the true roots of any uh, indigenous or uh, people of color led anything. Uh, why we shouldn't let these people be leading the way. Mm. Thompson Frank uh, is an appropriator herself. She likes to wear people that are just like her Mexicans. She likes to wear them on top of herself because she doesn't, she's been whitewashed her entire life and she wants to wear this Mexican, this and claim it, Claim it for herself, even though she doesn't really know anything about it. And the people that she buys, the, the shaman that she ferries around to her vacation spots and that she does these ceremonies with, they allow her to do these things that are very sacred, that are very uh, traditional and protected, that nobody would allow a, a person that doesn't know what the F she's doing, like her, uh, to be playing with. They allow her to do it for money hmm. just like the people at standing rock that sold ceremony just like the pretend indians that went out to burning man like myron dewey allow those people out there that put on the headdresses that mock indigenous people mock indigenous ceremony um they allow that to be okay they allow for people to wear blackface and feel like it's okay like i showed you in my show with harsh med they allow people to uh, pretend Indian and tell them that what they're doing is sacred, that what they're doing is they're part of the sacred hoop, they're part of mm. the family, they're part of the religion now. They're one of us. Here's Thompson Frank fetishizing 
Mexican people and people part, that are part of the caravan saying, humbling and awe-inspiring to see Native Americans from South America make their way on foot all the way to Mexico City, Toltecas meeting Incas, Mayas greeting Mosquito, Olmecas greeting Garifunas, Zapotecas greeting Tawahaka, Aztecas greeting Chorty. It is truly an eagle and condor moment. Ometeotl. Like, she sounds like Luis Monsivais, but for yeah. s- Mexicans. Uh, pretend Mexicaning. And the worst part is that she is using the crisis of this caravan to do it because um, she obviously does, doesn't have any concern, care, or knowledge of how long this has been going on. This is not a celebration like when people down went down Flag Road and saw all these different yeah, Native yeah, exactly. nations showing up with gifts for people at Standing Rock. This is a humanitarian crisis. But this woman, this billionaire that sits up in her ivory tower wouldn't have an effing clue. And she's fetishizing this crisis and these people. And it's really gross. Just because you're a, an adopt Mexican, uh, you don't get to do that to people. Hmm. It's disgusting. It's racist. Mm-hmm. And you're perpetuating this supremacy. Go ahead and post that up again. She goes, um, I'm going to speak about this thing I don't know now and give people taps and to answer questions that are often asked. She gets the white lady Becky voice because yeah. even though she is a Mexican, she acts like a white supremacist. And then she gets into the authority mode. I'll, I'll tell you how, how to do things. This is you know, who she's speaking to here. You know, the only way to apply for citizenship is via port of entry, not a consulate, over the internet, etc. This is why people are walking to the USA port of entry. Two, the USA has directly changed the leadership in South African countries, most recently during Obama's presidency, resulting in profitable outcomes for our country, but which hurt the well-being of the people in those countries. Three, Latin Americans are essentially 60 to 90 percent Native American. So many indigenous leaders in the USA see the caravans as traditional migratory routes taken by their indigenous brothers and sisters. And then she posted uh, digital smoke signals was live. Eagle met the condor in Mexico City Stadium where the migrant caravan from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. So Myron Dewey is in Mexico City. Ya oyeron raza, familia. Ya oyeron este... Hombre, Myron Dewey, que estuvo en Standing Rock, está ahora explotando el sufrimiento de la caravana. Es uno de muchos explotadores que se fue a México, que está en México en estos momentos. Les voy a enseñar quién es él. Can you show the video with him in Orlando? Uh, at least a still of it. Don't play it the video of Orlando and Myron Dewey or or the Orlando Dewey video. Yeah. Este es I've been, I've been Myron me. Dewey. Ese gordo que está sentado en medio con la camisa negra, pelo corto, bueno, tiene una trenza. Este hombre es también una persona que trató de encubrir una investigación uh, acerca de una mujer que fue falsamente um, uh, arrestada y falsamente acusada de abusar de su madre, la tuvieron en la cárcel por seis meses. Y hombres como este, mentirosos y falsos, que trataron de ofuscar la verdad, que trataron de esconder la verdad de lo que pasó en ese caso, usando sus uh, disque medios de comunicación, que no son nada más que un teléfono. Tienen drones, tienen equipo, que personas uh, como esta mujer, Marianne Thompson Frank les han ayudado a, a tener y los están usando para explotar el sufrimiento de las, de las personas uh, indígenas, de las caravanas, de los migrantes, de los refugiados. Eso simple y sencillamente no lo podemos permitir. Les estoy pidiendo a todos los que lo vean, um, inmediatamente informen a las autoridades que este hombre, eh, que es peligroso y también un fraude que ha trabajado, y que ha promovido a criminales peligrosos, está en sus tierras, en sus territorios, y háganle saber a las autoridades que lo cuiden, que lo busquen, que lo saquen de allí inmediatamente. 
se los ruego, se los pido por el bien de la gente, por la, por, por la, la, la caravana misma, por la seguridad de las mujeres, de los niños. Este hombre ha, ha sido acusado de abusar uh, de las mujeres um, y este, de ser un mujeriego. Entonces, que uh, les ruego que se protejan, que se le hagan saber a la gente que este hombre es peligroso, no está allí para ayudarles. Son una sarta de, de fraudes estas personas a las que estoy enseñando en pantalla, los dos. Pero uno de ellos está en la Ciudad de México, en, 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 en la caravana, en la um, arena de México. Here's that Frank Dewey post. Aquí está el um, canal que tiene en Facebook, se llama Digital Smoke Singles. Pueden ir a ver todos los otros videos que puso allí. And if you scroll down a little bit more, Duke, you can see he posted this along with a video. Oh, no, that's in post two of that. Sorry. That's uh, Frank Dewey post number two. Frank Dewey post number two is the one right above it. There you go. Frank Dewey post number two can be scrolled down, and you'll see he's showing a video of the caravan, and they're at an arena where they are staying. He has numerous videos on his channel where he's posting mm -hmm. about the people. He can't even speak Spanish, so he can't really talk to them. He does an interview in one of these with so, uh, one of the migrants that can speak broken English. Okay. Right. But um, what kind of reporting, what kind of real stories can this man get when he doesn't have the ability to communicate with any of the people and he doesn't even have any people along that can help him do that? He wasn't going to really tell you what's happening to the people. He wasn't really going to bring awareness. He's just bringing his own fat ass to Mexico mm -hmm. City to take the resources. Exactly. To take the limelight and to use this to elevate his brand. Why? Because the Marianne Thompson Franks of the world decided that that's what it was going to be. But as God is my witness, I will make sure that wherever these people are, they are called out because of their connections to the crime that I uncovered going all the way back to the Kathleen Bennett case at Standing Rock. Mm -hmm. But I have shown you many other crimes that they have been associated with and or committed or participated in covering up. And that is why I think we need to hold them accountable. But also because this is an exploitation of vulnerable people. Here is Dewey. I'm not going to show you that video with them at night in the stadium but i will show you one where he's literally following and stalking people as they're going through the subway they're using the subway to okay. transport themselves to wherever they're going and he's following people and just videotaping them i suspect as you can uh, judge for yourself but i've been in mexico city and i've lived in mexico city i've been on the subway i know the subway very well i've transported myself all through the mexico city subway system And the, tra and the transportation system, it's very good in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And you have come along oh, yeah. on several occasions as well, Duke. Mm -hmm. So judging by the um, people that are in the subway carrying all manner of different items, transporting boxes, mm -hmm. uh, merchandise, uh, you know, laundry, uh, children, all sorts of things. It is impossible to tell or to know if the people that are going through this video are merely travelers in the city because it is frequently common to yeah. see people traveling like this. And packed and you know, all sorts of people and lots of movement. And But he wants you to believe and he's claiming he's following people that are part of the caravan. Mm -hmm. Like... Okay, whatever, but here's his video. And it's just creepy to me that he can't even communicate with these people and never really intended to because he didn't make provision for that. But he's following them around, videotaping yeah. them and talking about them mm -hmm. in this just creepy, creepy way. Here you go. Cuidado, entre 
How was that? It's going up with the, with the, with the caravan. I'm here in Metro City at the stadium. I'm showing you what people are doing this morning to get ready to travel on the road. Please take a minute to share. So that is just creepy to me because it like is. these people, I'm just showing you what they're doing. Please mm -hmm. share this. Play yeah. like, um, stay the hell away from the migrants and from the Mexicans. Just stay, just stay the hell away from a migrant mm -hmm. because let me tell you, you, um, you have not been the kind of person that wants to show that you are willing to be held accountable or that you are willing to, um, you hang around with people that are hella dangerous mm -hmm. and that you've never been willing to call out. And you've been called out yourself. And the fact that he would obstruct this story from being told of Kathleen Bennett to stop people from even helping her mm -hmm. because they wanted to cover up their own complicity in the, in the close connections that they had to the people that committed this fraud, that committed the crime. You don't get to do that and get away with it and then go and pretend to rebrand yourself as a new hero for the next cause. Mm -hmm. And especially don't use the exploitation of what's happening to indigenous people traveling all the way from Honduras, Guatemala, through Mexico. But also, what do you make of this post? Here's Dewey saying that indigenous people are Jews Here's a post by Digital Smoke Signals, Myron Dewey himself huh. saying, there are thousands of Central Americans already in the United States. We are descendants of the tribes of Israel and this land belongs to us. The wow. resources are ours. What is he smoking, Duke? Please I don't explain. understand. And also, it, I think it shows his uh, ignorance of uh history isn't that what is, kaya alep buyaka taman said oh yeah yeah and also this is myron dewey is who accused you of not being indigenous because you're mexican you know and that uh he he's if you look at his past and what he what he would uh convey about other indigenous people he wouldn't recognize people as being indigenous now he's here saying that uh everybody's parts of the lost tribes of israel and it's like, what? What is he doing? And you know, I think he's down there. I think he's he's feeling isolated because he can't speak Spanish, and he's probably not with anyone. And he's feeling very isolated, so his mind is starting to spin, you know, because he's he really can't do. Well, he doesn't do media work, but he just shoots a few videos and is positioning himself to do something, which I don't know what it is. But that's just pretty much crazy talk there. It's so wrong on so many levels yeah. it's zionist it's it's anti-semitic yeah and racist and wrong and bizarre and, yeah. and anti-indigenous mm -hmm. and oh my god what is wrong with this man yeah. um Somebody come and get his 
Please, some get someone come and get your lunatic, <laughs> your village idiot. Come collect your village idiot and take him back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marianne Thompson Frank. These people are all cut from the same cloth. Uh, she, uh, as I told you, if you will recall, um, is part of this billionaire uh, group called uh, the Nexus Group. Mm-hmm. They all have inherited wealth. There's a series of uh, pictures that we're flashing on the screen now for those of you who want a refresher on that. You can also go back and watch the show that I did about her. There are many that I talked about Nexus in, but there was one in particular where I talked more in depth about her and her background yep, or, exactly. or a couple of them in which I talked about Manape and Christina mm-hmm. Holland back in their connection to her. Uh, but the one I was talking about her and her connections to Standing Rock and Wes Clark Jr., was Unholy Alliances. You can go check that out on kppfm.com. We'll also share it in the comments of this show. But Marianne Toxi- Toxi- Thompson, Marianne Toxic, Frank, Toxic Frank, uh, yeah. in the mm-hmm. other show I uh, also talked about was giving an award, just like Orlando, just like Dan the Glassman, to Christina Hollenbeck, the kingpin, that gathered mm-hmm. the false statements against Kathleen Bennett that was working with the Water Protector Legal Collective and Olive Bias, another person that gave false statements against Kathleen Bennett and orchestrated a completely fabricated hoax uh, saying that criminalizing a completely innocent woman for their own gain so that they could pretend hero at something, creating, fabricating a story out of whole cloth, just like Marcus Mitchell did, just like I showed you Monsa Vice has and this is a pattern of behavior for these people. That was Marianne Thompson Frank with Christina Hollenbeck. As you know, they're friends. She's also friends with Manape, the convicted meth dealer, George Lemaire. There he is with Christina Hollenbeck in the background. Yep, there she is. This was posted by none other than Mary Ann thompson frank and she is with menape hochini ga who now goes by a hoxita a kichita they all keep changing their name they can't yep. keep the same name for five minutes that's, because the cops, I, the cops are after them that's why i keep calling them out too and they're like oh got us no new slate rebranding mm-hmm. he was the one that said he call, he was one of the headsmen at standing rock that called for Kathleen Bennett to have her mother taken from her, yep. accused her, as many others did, of being an elder abuser. She mm-hmm. had her poor 82-year-old elderly mother kidnapped away from her and given to the kidnapper, Melanie Stoneman, that wanted to kill this poor old lady, mm-hmm. this poor uh, vulnerable elderly woman, and almost did. Yeah, And Thompson Frank also has a problem with wanting to pretend Indian so badly, even though, I mean, she wants to go full, you know, regalia, ceremony, fake ceremonies. These are not ceremonies which are real. Here she is. Everybody is doing uh, their full, you know, regalia Regalia, in these. Mm -hmm. She likes purchasing Indians, and then she, of course, she gets to dress up too. Mm -hmm. If they're doing the ceremony and they're burning stuff and they're, but, and it looks like she's the head priestess of the ceremony. Yep. Who taught her how to do this? She's got crystals and things in front of her on mm-hmm. a little mat. She's in a pretty fancy mansion. Yeah. Having all these people performative art this crap for her. And the post along with this says over to the side. This was an intercultural ceremony between the Tolteca of Teotihuacan and the Igbo of Nigeria. Ah. She sounds like that guy that's on um, the uh, European guy that talks about animals and birds and all of those wildlife shows. Okay. She talks <laughs> about people of color the same way. She fetishizes them in the same way and she collects them in the same way. And her money allows her to do this. And she wears them like clothes. Mm-hmm. She said this was an intellectual ceremony between the Tolteca of Teotihuacan and the Igbo of Nigeria. Today, after seeing all those children behind bars on the bus, I needed to think back 
to a beautiful moment of prayer with close friends. She's the one traumatized. See? Yep. She's no different than Monsa Weiss mm-hmm. and Higgins and all of these fake, phony, D-list performers. And then she starts tagging her friends. Yeah. Lawrence Bloom was there and my many members of the Nexus Indigenous Issues Working Group, my husband Joshua, and others. It is one of those deep, prayerful moments that I reflect on when I need to center. Oh, my teotl. <laughs> With Ricardo Cervantes, Kalu, Kalu, Ricardo Cervantes, Cervantes, Mexica Tonatiu Cano, and she tags all of her shaman, pretend uh, Indian uh, friends that she can. These are people that are probably from the countries that they are from, obviously. They're people of color, just like her. But they make it okay for her to lead ceremonies that don't exist and play with other people's religions and clothes and um, history and wear them like a costume, Mm -hmm. which she's doing. And here she is with one of those people she just tagged in that post Mm -hmm. and Christina Hollenbeck. So she doesn't just um, collect these uh, shaman that sell ceremony like Myron Dewey, like Chase Iron Eyes, like um, Melanie Stoneman and Chet Stoneman, like LaDonna, Mama LaDonna, like Phyllis Young. They share their pretend Indian friends with their Hollywood rich Nexus friends, mm-hmm. with their connected activist friends. And then in the comments of this post, it says, Mary Tom- Marianne Thompson friend Frank is sharing this picture of two of her favorite people getting to know each other at Cosmic Cafe. Christina Hollenbeck was one of the water protectors at Dapple and Ricardo Cervantes Cervantes, a.k.a. Mexica Tona Tucano, is a spiritual leader among the Tolteca people of Teotihuacan. You can learn... Teotihuacan is an abandoned city. It's yeah. an archaeological site. Yep. Yeah. You can learn more about his work for his community at Centro Cultural Tolteca de Teotihuacan AC, Tolteca Cultural Center, with Christina Hollenbeck. And then she tags him and... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just so you know what she's about for real, okay? This is what she is about. And that is why they are all so dangerous. That is why their presence in places where vulnerable people are should be stopped immediately. So I I challenge you to share this with as many groups in which these people, um, and share them with your groups all across the country, internacionalmente, Háganle saber a la gente quiénes son estos explotadores para asegurar que no tengan la oportunidad de hacer más daño. Let's make sure they can't do more damage so that we, you know, notify folks, especially in the areas of the Rio Grande and Texas, in the place where this Luis Monsivais, a.k.a. Gutierrez, is at, and in Mexico City. Thank you for being with us here on a Mexican Crossing Lines on 88.1 FM, KPPPLP, Fargo-Moorhead, where we are adding local color to your airwaves. Good night.